No. Sure. No. I'm telling you, you're, you're, not you're listening. absolutely insane. I, you're not it's listening because to Because it's a country song. No. It says it right here. But no, at like okay. nothing else, I'm a country boy, but right. that big city bottom fill me up with joy. Okay. And then it goes Listen. back to booty, 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 rocking everywhere. Right. It right. says it. I get that. You're not listening to me. I'm not saying those aren't the lyrics. Right. I am telling you unequivocally right. that that is not one of the songs from The Sound of Music. I, th what? I think you're crazy. What are you talking it's, about? It's, you, you, what you're missing out on is the context. Like you, you don't see how they connect. And what I'm saying is, it's not like it's absolutely. Like you're not going to find it on the soundtrack. It's unofficial. It's like how what? Snowpiercer is the unofficial sequence sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. This is a part. Oh, I have of the, the sound of music. I have the director's cut. Wistically. I just, I just. You're don't, not one. Of course, you're not going to find it. I don't think the facts are on your and side on this. Are going to be like, oh yeah, no. It says, get it right. Get it right. Shit, hit shit, it shit, 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 Fuck. Okay. Hi. <laughs> welcome to, uh, welcome to, what are we doing today? Skep Talk. Welcome to Skep Talk, the day when we, um, talk about skepticism. That's what we're doing. I'm going to close, uh, the lyrics to Miss New Booty. I, uh, my name is Forrest Valkai, uh, uh, your host in, in biology and atheism and other things. Uh, and today we've already got the lines open and we've got uh, people who want to talk about things. Uh, I, uh, I'm a biologist. I, I study evolution and bioanthropology. So I would love if people want to call and talk about evolution, uh, talk about you know whether or not to, uh, things evolve. That's what I'm all about. That's what I'm here for. And if you want to talk about God being good, uh, if, if you think that uh, Christianity especially uh, is is a good religion with good ideals and good philosophies, uh, or if you think that the God of the Bible is a good person who did or thinks or is good things, uh, please call and talk about it, uh, because that's what we're here for. We're, we're, we're a deconstruction and science education hub. Um, more deconstruction than anything. That's you got you got me and Shannon and Aaron and whatnot for the science and student Dr. Ben and all them for this. Yeah, no, we we can put that together a hub for deconstruction and science education, and that is what we're here for. So with that, we're gonna jump like straight into calls because we're trying to keep this uh, this episode right Brief. at two hours. Because holy yeah. crap, do I still have some work to do today? I've got I'm right in the middle of, of finalizing some big edits and like oh, you I can need blame the time. me. You can blame me. It's fine. You can tell it's, everyone. It's I feel also like just, shit. Yeah, feel like Jimmy's shit. exploded. I want to. I want to do his sort of insides show. are about to be on the outside. I, I was just gonna say, but also time. let's plug the. You remember before the show when you're like anything you want me to mention, and I was like, nah, just get into calls. Mm. Uh, I meant to say, yeah, yeah, let's plug the Patreon. Let's plug. Uh, hey, uh, oh, yeah. patreoncom slash call the line. We've started doing uh, zooms with patrons. We'll get Forrest on for one, presumably sometime soon. It supports both the hosts and the shows and the expansion. And we're trying to get, uh, up to podcasting, but also if everybody, if we get to 250 patrons by the end of January, which we've only been really going at this for a couple of days. And I think we're already getting close to a hundred. Uh, I'm going to shave my head and the sides of my beard and go down to just a goatee. And for a week of shows, I'm going to cosplay as Matt Dillahunty. And that those nightmares will live on with yeah. all of us. And it'll be because of your actions, the audience. Yeah. You can traumatize the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's somebody said totally non-scripted. Was there a question that we started the show with a script? Does someone think that that <laughs> sounded scripted? My God. No. Anyway, I'll stop interrupting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna, you're, you're fine. I'm gonna move downstairs. But I'll, I'll have the controls. So, Good luck. Someday I do want to do like I, I want to try to do a, a solo show for as long as possible. Like just see how long we can continue doing just science questions. That would be a tremendous amount of fun. But anyway, get your uh, uh, your super chats in early. Uh, we're gonna do as as close to an hour of calls as we can, and as close to a or maybe thirty minutes of calls and ninety minutes of super chats. I don't know, man. We're gonna try to get through as much as we can. Um, but the lines are open, so call the number on the screen. I'm assuming it's on the screen. Um, and and let's talk about things. Let's talk about science. Let's talk about religion. It's not on the screen, but also there are no currently uh, open lines. All four lines are full up. Uh, but there's always it's always in the description too. But yeah, yeah. So just start calling until we open a line. I'll I'll start taking yeah. one now. So we'll do a call immediately, and we'll go from there. Uh, okay, so we've got 
Uh, Jace from Houston, pronouns are he, him, uh, says the last time uh, that I was on, you called to talk about unlearning some Christian upbringing, and now you want to talk about some other things that you want to unlearn. Jace, how are you doing today? You're on the line. Hey. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, man. Hello. Awesome, awesome. Uh... Yeah, it's actually uh, it's actually my 28th birthday today, so I'm I'm glad that oh, I can call birthday. in. Yeah, oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Uh, so yeah, you said that there was something I else you wanted in. to unlearn. You were talking about uh, poor sex ed classes. Oh yeah, like my like my what little sex education that I did get in Christian school was terrible. Um, <laughs> there was there was a lot of like. A lot of like slut shaming type tactics and whatnot. Uh, I'm I'm sure that everyone's probably familiar with like the bubble gum or the tape analogy, where like nope. yeah, we talked uh, about that. I like, think it was the last time I was on. Yeah, I like mine was. Oh man, it was it was so tragic. Uh, I like. And it's, it's really difficult, like, whenever you, whenever you're taught this in school, like, you, you think that people are, like, are, like, the adults, like, you implicitly kind of trust them to relay accurate information to you. And then, like, but whenever it has, like, some sort of strange political or religious agenda underneath it, it's hard mm. to, it's hard to move past. Um but yeah, the uh, uh, the tape analogy was the one that was uh, that was used with us. Like they got someone like up to the front of the class, and they put a piece of like packing tape on their arm, and this was to represent uh, your your sexual purity or something of the like. Yep. And uh, if you uh, if you're going to be with a person, uh, for life, because of course there's no, no sex before marriage and whatnot, uh, <laughs> then, um, if you, if you constantly, uh, or, or if you have sex multiple times before marriage, then that, that tape bonds to one, uh, to another person and to another person and to another person. And before long, yep. it just won't stick. You won't have, you won't have any value as, as a person. And it's very demotivating. And it's really, it's really sick. Like in my mind, how people get devalued because women are only valuable, uh, for their virginity, which is a really creepy yep. thing. So, yep. uh, there, there's a lot of layers was, here because like, that's, that's, that's the biggest thing. Like it, everything you just said is stuff that, you know, we, we've heard before the tape analogy was one that I heard. Uh, uh, the, the one that I was taught in school was like, you get a bottle of soda and you can drink out of it, but then you have to spit into it and then hand it to the next boy. And, you know, would you drink out of this? And then you have to spit in it. And how many, if three or four boys have spit in this bottle, are you going to drink it anymore? You must be disgusting to drink out of this spit bottle. And girls, you don't want to have a bunch of spit in your, you know what I mean? Like that's, that was the whole analogy. Uh -huh. And it's funny because it, it is always, always directed at women. It is always you should not have sex with a bunch of people because you are now dirty, you are now undesirable, you are now broken, you are now you know, it just this this disgusting, desecrated, impure. But it's never for the boys. It's never you know oh you shouldn't do this because it's it, that's you know you're a stud if you can uh, if what was that dumbass if you can uh, if a key unlocks lots of locks and it's a master lock and if a lock only has one key then it's a good lock but if a a, key, a lock is unlocked by lots of keys it's a shitty lock like just these ridiculous things that equate a woman exploring her sexuality living her full life being a person enjoying herself as being something broken tarnished dirty and you're right it, it's it's very much objectifying them it's making them a prize something that boys should want this special pure thing which also has a lot of creepy undertones of like 
you want this perfect, pure little angel type thing. It's it's very weird, it's, especially when you add on like this whole idea of marriage and like you 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 are supposed to consummate your marriage on the first night, and you have this pure daughter, and you hand her away, and you're like, ah, finally now she can get fucked in the way that I approve. Very weird. Very weird all around. <laughs> there's there's really no a angle lot of, of it like, that isn't weird, just fucking creepy. Like all of this weird ownership type language mm-hmm. and and like yep. and me being like me being gay and whatnot, there was never any talk about like about homosexual things or other other sexual preferences and and things yep. like that, because of course they're all sinful and bad and evil. Uh yep because of like two, three verses in the Bible, which is like mm-hmm. a fraction of how many talk about divorce. Like, yep. But I know Christians that have been divorced else. 10 times and remarried 11 mm-hmm. times. Like, and they play football. So they broke that whole rule about touching the skin of a dead pig. And they, I believe they probably shaved the sides of their beard and like cut their hair on the sides. So like they broke that one too. Like, it, yeah, it's 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 all just a, a picking and choosing, and, and half of that shit as well is is mistranslated. You know, back in the I think it was in the '60s when they changed pedophile to homosexual in, in the Bible, um, and it, to to make it to try to equivocate these things. So like, yeah, it's 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 real gross. And like the the thing that bothers me is that tri- a lot of the time when we're talking about you know why this kind of abstinence only sex education is important, and when we're talking about why teaching people not to have multiple sexual partners is important. And when we're talking about why teaching girls to be pure is important and all this other dumb shit that, that, you know, the, the religious conservatives think is so valuable. Um, it falls down to reducing rates of teen pregnancy, reducing rates of STIs, um, reducing rates of sexual abuse. It, it falls. It's there. There's good reasons that they think that you should be teaching these ridiculous, terrible lessons. But the fact of the matter is the actual data show consistently that if you want to reduce the rate of STIs, you have comprehensive sex education. If you want to reduce the rate of teen pregnancy, you have comprehensive sex education. If you want to reduce the risk amounts of sexual abuse, you have comprehensive sex education. If you want to improve the lives of like women in general, but also like the whole ass society, you make sure that women are educated especially about sex, but just all over, like at least up to like, I think the, the metric is like an eighth, eighth grade, eighth grade education is like the minimum of whatever that you notice these major societal shifts. Um, and you like teach them about like their own freedom over their own bodies and, and, and give them control over their lives and their destinies. Literally the exact opposite of what these people are trying to push down kids' throats in order to get the same benefit. Um, so it's, it's, it's deeply frustrating. Like when we're talking about this and, and you hear really honest oh, people yeah. giving really honest desires for really good things. And then they're going to go about it the worst way possible by teaching the exact opposite things of what actually are going to bring about this good benefit that we all want. It's, uh, it's tough. Even the religious have that saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So like, this is just a, and that's, another, that's exactly another what glaring example of that in my mind. Yeah, and that's exactly what we see now. It's 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 you know uh, there's there's never a question when it comes to comprehensive sex ed when it comes to education in general. There's never a question about boys. You know, it's it's always you know of course the men are going to be the ones to to get all the education to lead the world to do this and this and the other. And it's it's insane to me. I know this is a a, a logical fallacy to say you know in this day and age we should be past X Y Z thing, but like I'm just on a genuine like how egregious it is. It blows my mind that in 2023, we still have to be having these arguments about like who deserves the same kind of education, who deserves the same kind of rights, who is it okay to discriminate against today? You know what I mean? Like that's, that's still the argument that we have to have. Um, and that, Oh, it pains me deeply. (laughs) Another, another glaring inadequacy of my education was there was not a lot of talk about how to have healthy conversations about your wants, needs, and desires in sexual situations yeah. with others. Not a lot of focus on consent and bodily autonomy yeah. and stuff. And I feel like it's just raising this 
generation of very like sexually predatory men and very Mm -hmm. uh like very sexually submissive women where they're going to just Mm -hmm. fall for like someone who's going to domineer over their entire life and Mm -hmm. like or or like 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 goodness knows like how many how many women that are that are lesbians or like or anything else that that don't want to have sex with men but feel that they have to because it's like it's the godly thing to do like i'm like i'm even a victim of that in in the opposite sense like I was about to say, it's probably the exact same feeling that you've had to be pressured to have sex with women. It's, it's absurd. Um, and you see this a lot, especially like you know, when you look at people online, you know, it, it's no secret that you know, women get harassed and abused online where people you know, call them ugly and fat and this, that, and the other. And like, you really you see this, this mentality in, in, in men where it's like, how dare you not be attractive to me? That's your job. You're, I, I don't want to have sex with you but you need to try to get me to want to have sex with you. And if you're not, then you're the asshole here. And it's like, it's insane the way that we treat people as if that is like their function, their role in life is to turn me on. And if you're not doing that enough, then, you know, you, you have committed some egregious atrocity. Um, it's, it's, it's really wild. Uh, but, Honestly, like the, the, the biggest thing that just sticks out to me, and, and you hit the nail on the head when you talked about like the effects that this is going to have with sexually predatory men, especially. Um, the thing about toxic masculinity is that it, it hurts men first. It destroys your mentality, your self-worth, your social attachments, like how you handle life in a social world. Like it, it hurts men first. And then those men with all the emotional damage that they have accrued, go out and hurt women and like make the world a worse place overall. Um, it's, it's insane. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, uh, is to see if a a man is fucking crazy and, and, and toxic is refer to him as a girl in any way possible anything at all if he says something just be like oh girl same just any anything you're like oh look at you you're a pretty girl aren't you saying anything like that and if he's normal yes, and queen. sane, that will, yeah th- yeah it's a great one yes if a man can hear that and just be fine then cool but i it's always fucking funny to me how many crazy ass weak men will lose it and be like i'm not a girl i'm not a girl. <laughs> like, and they'll get offended at that shit um there's a guy on tiktok uh kyle prue i think his name is he does like things to say to piss off men and it's like if uh you know marvel was bought by disney so if you see a guy who's like all about thor and iron man like oh so you're like a disney adult you like that the disney shows and oh my god they freak out like no that's for girls (laughs) it's so good um (laughs) yeah just any any time you can equate just just call a man a girl for any reason at all and when they lose their fucking minds then you can like move on like all right dude we're we're not gonna be friends (laughs) I I happen to love Disney like Disney films and stuff that are based around like a female lead character like I loved uh the Sleeping yeah. Beauty cartoon the like Moana yeah. recently like is amazingly good um like things like that like I I really mm-hmm. dig strong female protagonists um yeah even in like even in video games it's kind of it's kind of odd where like I was playing uh, this game called Warframe and there are all of these different characters and they have like, they have stereotypical male, female names and stuff, but they're all basically like these bio robot things. And a former friend of mine did not want to play as a female, one of these characters because it's like, well, I'm not a, I'm not a girl. Like I don't want to play as no girl character. But then there's also the other, right. the other side of that coin of toxic masculinity where they only want to play as a girl character because, like, 
I'm going to be running around this video game for however many hours. Like, what do I want to be staring at some dude's butt for? Like, <laughs> are they rather be staring at this, like it is, at a lady character's butt? Like, it is funny. There, there all, was a. Uh, uh, there's two it's things all highly confusing about what you just said. Right. There's, there's actually three three things about what you just said. Number one, I I grew up in in an era of toxic masculinity. I remember being told as a kid that if you play a female character in a video game, you must be gay. And it took like I remember at the time that was what. And like the mo- older I got, like that, how does that make any sense? That's so weird. But there was actually like uh, there was actually some studies done on this. In fact, I've got a uh, this book right here. Invisible Women, Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men by Caroline Perez. Um, in this book, I, it was right in the beginning of it, if I remember right. Uh, she talks about how like uh, female characters in video games, uh, that the video game doesn't sell as well. Um, even if it's an option to get it, if you can pick a male or female character, male gamers don't want to play it, if there's even the option. And the, the big thing that often is the... the um, what do you say, like the scapegoat, where they get out of the conversation. They say, well, it, it, it takes you out of the game. It's, it's you know, I can't, I can't really connect with the game because I'm not a girl, so I don't, you know, it's a, and it's like, you play games where I you're an it Italian woman who goes down to an artificial character. Right, you you play a game as an Italian plumber where you go down shit pipes and kill fucking walking mushrooms and dragons. You play games where you're a space marine. You play games where you're a fucking se- uh, hedgehog that can run at the speed of sound. But having tits takes you out of it? That's what's going to break the reality for you? Like, you can't suspend disbelief for that? Like, it's crazy. And then there was another study done where they took, like, the the best gamers in, like, some... is like, like, you know, Call of Duty or whatever. Um, and these are people who play competitively. People who, like, are, like, the best in the world. They play esports tournaments. And uh, they would put a voice modulator on them to make them sound like a girl. And immediately, no one wanted to play with them. Their teammates fucked off, uh, fucked off and wouldn't play with them. Uh, they were like, they, Their stats went down because they had no competitive advantage because their people would not help them in the game. These are cooperative games. Uh, and they all were saying, like, this is so discouraging. I would never want to play a game again if people treated me this way all the time. Um, it's just, it's crazy, dude. Uh Anyway, that's I could rant on that for a I very a long time. I a lot different on the other side of the looking glass. Seriously, uh, and the, you can even hear my favorite is is stories from trans men who talk about how like as soon as they started transitioning, people took them seriously more often. People stopped interrupting them. People stopped t- talking over them. People held the door open for them. Were like more respectful and polite. And it's like just oh my gosh, the 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 contrast that they experience transitioning from from female to male uh, is just unbelievable. Um, but anyway, again, I could go on for a long time, but I got to jump to other calls. Is there anything in particular, otherwise, that you wanted to throw out there, Jace? Uh, I would. I just uh, uh, I asked this question. Uh, last night on uh, on Aaron's uh, Book of Mormon show, and uh, mm. I, I'd like uh, I'd like your answer. It's a really short one. Uh, what sure, if sure. any is uh, what if any is your favorite piece of religious art? Uh, for example, mine mm. is the Garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch because I've seen it in person in the Prado Museum in Spain. Uh, and I did not know that there was stuff painted on the outside of it. And it's what they thought that the earth and the solar system looked like on the outside of it. And I just find it really, really beautiful. And the butt jazz is also really great. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I had to pick one, so I just looked up uh, uh, as far as like, uh, Christian mythology uh, artwork. I really love that pa- that uh, um, uh, sculpture of. I like sculptures more than uh, artwork more myself, but like uh, the, of Saint Michael slaying a demon. Like that's just such a dramatic, cool looking. I want to make sure I got the right uh, 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 angel here, but yeah, the Archangel Michael killing some demon. Such a cool looking piece. Um, I love that one. Um, I also love the one. Um, I believe it's called Pathetic. Uh, it's it's the uh, of uh, Mary holding the, the broken body of Jesus. That one's a really cool looking piece as well. Outside of Christian mythology, um, I would pick. There's a, a sculpture of um, 
Oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called. I'm trying to think, it's it's Prometheus and the Oceanids. I think is Oceanids. I don't remember. It's these sea nymphs, um, and it's Prometheus crucified to the rock, and these sea nymphs up around him. Um, if I was ever bougie enough to have an, like an artwork, a piece of like a sculpture, like in the foyer of my mansion, it would be that one. Uh, so it's it's very very cool because Prometheus is one of my favorite characters, so one of my favorite literary characters. He's uh, really 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 cool. So yeah, one of those one of those ones is definitely my favorites. If I like a close second is Melancholia by Albrecht Durer. Uh, it's a print, mm. and it also has a mathematical magic square where every row and column and major diagonal adds up to the same total, and it also has a lamenting. Uh, like a lamenting figure in it. Uh, and melancholy is what they called depression uh, before they had the, the word depression for it. But yeah. Love that. Very cool. <laughs> thank you so much. Right on, man. Well, thank you. Hey, I appreciate it. Have an awesome rest of your day, man. Thanks for calling in. And by the way, somebody pointed I'm, out in the chat, a couple of people pointed out in the chat, it wasn't uh, Pathetique, it was uh, Pieta. I was confusing it with a, a different thing. Uh, Pathetique was that really cool Beethoven piece, La Pieta, the, the pity. Of of holding uh, uh, the Christ, it was really that's just a, such a stunning piece of artwork. Horrible, horrible mythology with a beautiful artwork surrounding it. Lovely. Um, with that, we've got a few other people on the line. As usual, theists get priority, so I'm going to jump over here to somebody that we've heard from a couple of times before, um, and and I am thrilled to hear if we get any new arguments or new ideas. We've got Andrew from Florida who says if morality is subjective and we're all just animals and nothing is truly evil. Andrew, you're on the line. How are you doing today? Good evening, gentlemen. Yeah, so we, we've called Hello? in before talking about this, about like if, if it, the one thing you spoke on was uh, rape specifically. And if I remember correctly, the last time we spoke, uh, we threw out a bunch of things about, you know, the, the, the horrible things in the Bible. Um, and you said that was a different time. It doesn't matter. And then we said, well, Jesus said that this is all true and that you know, the things in the Old Testament are still hold up today. And you said, that doesn't matter either. Jesus was also just a product of his time. So I'm curious to know where we go from here. Yeah. You're, it seems like you guys are judging the morality of the ancient texts with objective criteria. So it seems like yes. you are you believe in objective morality. Um and so my question uh, today It's I, close. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's close. It's not uh, strictly objective. Um so morality is necessarily a subjective thing because it requires a thinking mind to decide what morality even means. Um however we can establish a more or less objective criteria just by pointing to human well-being. Um, that is something that, you know, even though you could potentially eat too many apples and die, and even though you could theoretically build up a tolerance to eating rat poison and not die, we can still pretty easily say, based on the science of health and nutrition, that eating apples is good for you and eating rat poison is bad for you, right? And so, because of that, because we have this you know, general understanding of human health and well-being, we can say that things like rape and torture and incest and murder and genocide and all these things are bad because they are detrimental to human happiness, health, and well-being. Whereas things like clean energy and, and, and feeding hungry people and making sure everybody has a house to live in, and like those things are really nice because they improve human health and well-being. So like, yeah, we can establish a more or less objective reality, or a more or less objective morality, but at the end of the day, it's important to remember that at its baseline, morality is a subjective endeavor because it is, you know, there's no morality for a rock, so to speak. Right, right. There's no morality for a rock, right? <clears throat> and so you're saying baseline, it, it's subjective. Um, yeah, just, so my argument basically... Um, agreeing with you that there are horrific things done in the name of religion. And I'm saying mm -hmm. it imp imposes itself on religion. Um, and horrific we, things we called about... for by religion is my main argument. Not just that it's done in the name of religion, but that it is called for by oh. religion. Yes. Right, right, right. Relig I think religion can be good or bad depending on whoever is using it. But, but then that good or bad, I'm saying it's evil to commit genocide. Um, but... Mm -hmm. If there's no God and 
it, it, it's, it's just we're all basically – we're all basically – okay, so we're, we're just products of nature without a higher transcendent being then these things are mm. relative. They're bad in sense of, okay, we don't want to be extinct. Extinction is bad. Starvation is bad. But without a God giving humans inherent value, these things aren't evil. Like it's not evil to commit genocide. It's just not evolutionarily appropriate. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, so it's not evil- so much evolutionary yeah. appropriate. That's not the um, – it's it's simply just baseline. I understand that I'm not the only thinking person in the room. I understand that my actions have consequences for other people. I know what it's like to feel sad. I don't want other people to feel that way. So it's, you know, I, I study evolution, but it's certainly not in my day-to-day life do I consider the evolutionary implications of, you know, whether I'm going to buy from this company that uses slave labor or that company that doesn't. It's just a matter of human well-being. That, that really is all it comes down to. Right, right. Um, yeah, it seems like we have to go outside of biology, outside of evolution and science to get to right and wrong or else it's just relative. Um, the person with the bigger gun can determine right and wrong. Uh, these are These are just actions that without a deity saying this is objectively right or wrong, it doesn't really matter uh, at the end of the day um, if, if the Nazis took over. Uh, and I think, that, that's a, mm. I think that's a potential consequence Based. of your ideas. And, and I, I agree with you saying moral. the person with the bigger gun can determine what they teach is right or wrong or what they establish is right or wrong in their society, but I don't think they change what's right or wrong. Again, my my morality, my moral standard being based in human well-being is the most objective thing that you can get lacking any kind of supernatural authority. And if you had a bigger gun, that doesn't change the science of nutrition, the science of medicine, any of that. It changes what you teach, what you enforce, sure. But at the end of the day, dead still dead. And and that's that doesn't change anything. I do have a question for you though. It seems like you know, you're you're really basing this off the idea that in order for anything to be objective morally, and us for it to have a, a strict moral code, we need this this authority. Um, if I could, you know, theoretically somehow, if I could prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt right now that there is no God, if I could do this this impossible task and like convince you one hundred percent, you are now a million percent atheist. Would you murder or rape people or steal things or do any of those awful things? Absolutely not. Why not? Because I think it's evil, horrible, and bad. So I would use the same and, word. And here why is it evil and horrible and bad? Why is it evil, horrible, and bad? It's not only that they have consequences. I believe it's an inherently e- the action itself is inherently evil because it's destroying. With is that, I can't get to it without God. Um, it's only relative. Okay, well then we have a serious problem. We have a serious problem then. If you can't get to rape and murder is evil without going through God, you have the problem here, because I very easily can. I know that rape and murder are wrong without God because that's taking away someone's freedom, that's taking away someone's bodily autonomy, that's changing someone's life irreparably, that is doing violence upon a person, taking away their free will, their own authority over themselves, that's causing them physical and emotional pain, that's causing lifelong trauma. I can point to a million different problems with those actions that have serious detriment to somebody else. And because I give a shit about other people, I don't want to do those things. I don't need a God for that. Why is it that you can't get to rape is bad and murder is bad without going through God as an intermediary? I can. We do. You just tried to. You didn't. Those things are bad. Those things are bad. But but you just tried to explain why and you said I can't get there without God. Right. Do you yeah, want to try again? In the middle of my sentence. Try again. Why is rape and murder bad without bringing up God? If there, if I could prove to you that there is no God, why wouldn't you rape and murder people? It causes 
on, 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 it, it causes huge amounts of suffering to individuals and their well-being. It destroys flourishing. Period. Um, it causes a lot Done. of misery. Um, Good. There, okay. That's it. We agree. That's it. We're done. Of course, we agree with that. You of don't course. do those things because they hurt people. So yeah. why do you need yeah. anything else? Those things okay, hurt so people, so I'm not okay. going to do them. Why do you need more? Because I'm looking at hum- I'm looking at the planet Earth with a, like a mm-hmm. fr- with a framework. There's no God to say these things are evil, so. If, right. if we all die of nuclear war, there's nothing inherently, objectively evil about it. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Without God, but it does matter because there's God. So it's, it's evil if just the relative. the entire planet Earth, if the entire planet Earth and everybody on it was wiped out today, it doesn't matter. Nothing changes in the Andromeda galaxy if everything on Earth dies. That doesn't matter one bit. Morality comes from interaction between conscious minds. Again, it is inherently by its nature necessarily subjective in this way. But we can have an objective framework based on those mentalities, based on people's health. So you're right. It doesn't matter if nuclear war wipes out everybody on the planet. The person who pushed the button is still an asshole, but history will forget them as soon as the last person to remember him is dead. It's over. It doesn't matter one bit. It's all about the interaction between conscious minds. If I was by myself on a barren planet with no other living thing, there would be no morality because there is no interaction between conscious minds. You don't need a God for any of this. You already answered your own question. If it hurts somebody else, you probably shouldn't do it. Period. Of course. I agree. We agree with that. If it hurts other people, and that's how we get human rights. Um, So then why are you hung up on this idea about objective versus subjective? We can identify what those things are, and it changes nothing. Right. Um, Why I'm hung up on it personally? Because if we live in a society, God forbid, the Nazis won World War II, and they dominate the world, and they're Mm -hmm. in charge. And they do horrible, horrific things. Without God, we can't, we can't say that what they're doing is objectively evil. It's just relative. On a small scale, it, it, it's horrible. But what, on a larger scale, what, what they were doing the was, was what the Nazis well, is, did and yeah. was what the Nazis wanted to do harmful to human life. Absolutely, yeah. Then it's bad. We don't need okay. a God for that. Exactly yeah. like what we just said a minute ago. Okay. Andrew knows it's that the Nazis was a God movement, right? I don't know. That just yeah. I, I was gonna I was gonna avoid that because I thought it was kind of a red herring. But like, yeah, the fact that the Nazis were a very much religious organization doing what they believed their God thought was objectively good is kind of a big red flag there. But it's it's not super relevant. Yeah, it's a good point though. I, I and I, I want to validate Jimmy what Jimmy and said. And we address not in, relevant to in the, all to fairness, the Andrew. At about. the beginning, you did mention at the beginning that you understand that my my argument is that religion causes these bad things. So, like, I don't think you're trying to avoid any of that. And I, I want to give you credit. You did you, you did mention it. I don't think it's relevant for right this second though. Okay. Yeah. Um. But. I'm, I guess it bothers me. I'm caught up just trying to come to the conclusion that if, if there is no God, which I do think it's a possibility that there is no God, that, that's po- that mm-hmm. it, it is possible, then these, okay. things aren't, these things aren't evil. I can't say these things are evil. They're just they're bad right. for the people experiencing them. But if an abuser kills a victim, it's bad for the victim, mm-hmm. but the abuser gets property, the abuser gets his agenda across. So in terms of just nature, sure. it's just an animal gaining resources. And so we can't, how can we say that what they're doing is objectively evil? That's, that's kind of where I'm cut up and it bothers me. Animals do that all the time. The difference between humans and other animal species is that we're really, really, really good at empathy across time and space. 
That's the one thing we've got going on for us that no other animal does. We can look at yeah. the pictures of starving children on the other half of the world and say, ah, this sucks. Other animals don't have that capacity. So like, yeah, if a turtle eats a fish, then the turtle is benefiting and the fish isn't benefiting. Totally. That you could, you could draw a moral argument out of that. But in nature, we don't draw an ought from an is. Nature isn't good or evil. Nature just is. We are also a part of nature, but we also have this addition, this culture added onto it. And that is what's guiding this conversation. Now, the duality between culture and nature is, is a false one. There's a really blurry line there that doesn't mean the same thing from society to society, from generation to generation, from person to person. It's important to recognize that because then we can have the conversation about what are we going to consider good and evil. If you look at our you know, human culture, especially my, I'm, I'm a European American, right? The culture of my ancestors for the past several hundred years was if you don't look like me, you're not actually a human, therefore it doesn't matter if I kill you. Here in America, this country was built on the enslavement of one kind of person and the genocide of another kind of person because they weren't considered people. They were considered more animals than anything else. Early authors wrote about how America is completely empty and that Native Americans didn't actually own land because they didn't work it and dominate it the way that Europeans did. These were totally different ways of thinking that changed the morality of these people. And they were fucking wrong. They had their subjective morality and it was corrupt and evil and racist and stupid. It was objectively dumb. If you know things about biology, the way they thought was broken. So now we look at our world today and we ask ourselves, what sorts of things do I hold dear today that I don't need to? What morality do I have today that is actually fundamentally broken? How am I going to come up with a way of making sure that I'm doing as many good things and as few bad things to as many people as possible, right? How do we go about doing that? Do we crack open a dusty old book from the Iron Age that says it's okay to murder people and commit genocide and take the virgin girls as your own property and slave people and all these things and then do what you did in the last call and say, well, this isn't relevant. We'll leave these parts out. We'll skip this part. We'll kind of make it, well, we'll figure it out. Or do we do what I and other humanists are advocating for and say, I know what hurts people and I'm not going to do those things and I don't need anything beyond that. You understand? Of course, morality has no objective, definite roots. Nothing means anything in the universe. It's meaningless. But that doesn't mean you get to be a dick. You can still make choices based on what we understand about science and reality. We can come up with a, a worldview, a morality that is, for lack of a better word, intelligently designed. That's an option that we have. And you don't need a god to do it. In fact, having a god there gets in the way and makes it a problem. <clears throat> okay. A lot of good points there. And I agree with most of it. Um, a lot of good points. Uh, that's the basis for secular morality. Um, people, they, but either way, there's no higher authority. People can disagree, even if they're secular. Um, and so sure. it's just a free for all, like back and forth, back and forth. So it, I, I don't see how it solves the problem. But, you know, there, there's wars in religion, too. It, back and forth, back and forth. So, Sure. So which one's better? Yeah. Being able to go back and forth and discuss and debate and reason and argue about what's the best way to, you know, make sure everybody's happy or saying, this is right because I told you so. Which one's better? The way you worded it, you know, of course, secular morality. It, the way you worded it there. How could I have worded it any more honestly? So it's, I think it's the way you described the, the, the way you described religious morality isn't that black and white. Um, that How it, is it, it not? This is, this God is, told you what's right, and so you do it. Yeah, but people disagree on what they think God is. People disagree with what God said, and people disagree on how to do it. Um, and so, right. It, there's there there are and the difference a lot of being good, and the difference being what the difference 
the, the, the Lord's Resistance Army and the KKK and the Nazis were all Christian organizations. So they read the same book you read and got a very different meaning. For me, like for, for my camp over here, we, we don't have a book. We don't have that kind of thing. If, if someone wants to argue with me that rape and murder and incest and all these things are good, they're going to have to start from the premise that human suffering doesn't matter, at least in that way. That's a fundamental dis- difference than saying, I'm pretty sure God said something else. Well, I'm pretty sure God said something else. Well, I'm pretty sure. One is completely faith-based. It's based on your interpretation of an interpretation of a mistranslation of a republication of a misinterpretation of an oral tradition turned into a literary tradition from a t- 2,000 years ago versus modern evidence, modern science, modern philosophy, the best minds over the past 4,000 years all coming together to tell us what is and isn't real. Do you not see how there's a glaring difference and those are not on the same playing field at all? Yeah. The way you're, the, the way you're framing it, um, of course, sec- secular morality is superior. Um, but I think what we're missing out on is Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong did all these horrendous mm-hmm. things in the name of secular morality and there was no higher authority, such as a divine being, so that nobody could tell them what they were doing is evil, might makes right. They had the power. And so it's just my word against your word. With religion, you have God said this, and then the other one said God said that. So I think, honestly, both camps have the same problem on a fundamental level. Uh, two things that are I, wrong with what you just said. Number one, two things are wrong with what you just said. Number one... Stalin and Mao didn't commit those atrocities in the name of secular morality. There's never been an atheist who went and blew up a bus in the name of no gods. That isn't, that's not how anything works. They did those evil things because they were evil people and they wanted power for themselves. That's how fascists work. So they, they didn't do those things in the name of any one particular morality besides, I want mine and they got theirs, and that was the whole thing. That was the, the long and short of it. And then the second thing, you said if they had had some sort of objective morality, then maybe they would have... But again, in the same time period, we have the Nazis, who were a Christian organization, who had God mit uns, God on our side, on every belt buckle, and who swore allegiance to the Fuhrer as a, 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 a major demigod, whose first, like, treaty was with the Catholic Church. So, like, it's not, again, these are not even close to the same playing field. There are good people that are religious, and there are bad people that are religious. There are good people who are atheists, and there are bad people who are atheists. But if you want to have a good person do bad things, you need religion for that. That's it. Good people do good things. Bad people do bad things. When good people do bad things... They have religion telling them to do those bad things. No atheist has ever done something horrible because atheism. Okay. Okay. I can, I can concede to that. Atheism does not say do this or do that. It's a justification if someone wants to be evil or good. Okay. Um, I guess I have a final question or, or argument. Mm-hmm. You're blaming, if a person does bad things in the name of religion, you're saying it's the religion's fault. And yep. if, a, if a secular person does evil things, you're saying, oh, it's just, they're bad ideas. So, so yep. you're saying religion itself is evil. I'm saying you're, yes. that people are good or evil. Because when people, bad, a bad person, a person isn't evil for doing some, committing something like genocide, whether they do it mm-hmm. in, the, in, the form, in the name of secularism or in the name of religion, I'm saying that person is, because of theism, that person is inherently evil. You can't, it, it, it seems like you can't say that. You can't say they are evil. You're blaming it on the religion or you, just so their you, ideas. So you were right at the beginning. You were right at the beginning. 
when a religion a religious person does something evil, I do a lot of the times. It's not always a one to one, but like uh, more often than not, and especially in what we're talking about here, I would blame religion. And if an atheist does something evil, I would blame the person individually and say, okay, you have some fucked up ideas and you, that's that was what's wrong with you. But this is not a contradiction because the major thing here is that as we mentioned in the first time you called in, the Bible advocates for genocide and for slavery and for rape and for owning people as property and for all sorts of horrible things. If a religious person is a good person, they're not doing it because of these religious beliefs. They're doing it in spite of those religious beliefs. If they do horrible, evil things, they're following the book. If an atheist or a secular person in general does good things, it's because they're a good person. They don't have that guide telling them what to do. They chose to be good all on their own. And if they do bad things, because they don't have a guide telling them what to do, they chose to do bad things all on their own. However they justify it is irrelevant. At the end of the day, you read the same book that the Nazis read, and you got a different idea out of it. Good for you. They got the same book, and they did something insane. The common denominator here is your religion. You are violating the things that your Bible tells you to do by being a good person. I am not violating anything. I'm just living my truth and my best self and doing what I think is right based on my logic and my morality. Do you see the difference? I see the difference. Um, Ooh. Okay. I'm going to give you the last word, last thing you want to say, and then I've got to move on. We've been on for 24 minutes. i got three other people on the line. All right. I just want to say something very offensive to Jamie. God bless you. Have a good <laughs> night, guys. All right. Take care, Andrew. Genuinely, uh, I do appreciate that call. And I do want to say that actually, I know you were being snarky, and that's fine. But actually, I could go on a whole thing about how the words God bless you or God loves you actually is a fucked up thing to say, but it wouldn't be relevant right now. But genuinely good call. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, with that, we've got three other people on the line, and I wanted to be done with calls by now because we could get into the Super Chats, but I'm going to try to speed through these last couple. Um, we've got Ethan calling in from New York, pronouns he, him, has a question about the evolution of Homo sapiens. Ethan, how are you doing today? You're on the line. Hey, how you doing, guys? I'm all right, man. So what did you want to talk about? What was your question? I may not. We'll all see right, if I so, can answer it. Who uh, knows? Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with, uh, uh, with the idea of evolution and the way Homo sapiens evolved and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. And it is, fair to, it is fair to say that after uh, the use of fire, uh, our, our brain started to grow, correct? It was before that, but especially after that, yeah. Okay, and so my whole thing is how it, it's a big ask for in uh, I guess an ape-like climbing uh, um, mammal to to I guess see fire, not be mm -hmm. uh, too afraid to go over to the fire. And then take it and then use it. Um, and then they had to do yeah. this for uh, for a while. So I'm, uh, for me, I'm just confused on how how they did. I guess how they got to the point of um, using it so freely, especially because you know making a fire without uh, having embers is is not an easy task for someone, especially for someone yeah, yeah. who doesn't know how to make it. And much less for someone who has a smaller brain, you know, or, you know, a creature with a smaller brain. So yeah. you could clear that up. So, well, it, it, it all comes down. So the, the first animal, the first one in our lineage to control fire was Homo erectus. Um, and Homo erectus lived from about uh, 1.8 million years ago to about 100,000 years ago in, in that range. Um, it's yeah. a little fuzzy on the edges, but that's those are the definite ranges. Um and the oldest evidence that is definitely, absolutely cooking um, goes back to about 800,000 years. So in that view, they're right in the middle of there. Um, <clears throat> as far as them controlling fire in general, not cooking, 
99% sure that goes back closer to a million, a little bit past a million, maybe maybe almost to one and a half million, but not not there. Um, and that's we see like you know soot and like burn marks on the top of the cave that they were living in and whatnot. So like we see evidence of like a, a fire pit, but we definitely have them cooking by eight hundred thousand years. Um, and so like as far as you know, humans being curious about things, that's in our nature is to be more curious than afraid and to go poke stuff and see what it does. Um, I've often said that science is like the most human endeavor because that's all it is. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, being something that we, we're, we're cooking or like working with or anything like that, that's a matter of innovation. That's more like a tool use type situation. So these guys would have learned what fire is learn to control it, learn that it gives them heat and warmth and safety and light and all those things, they would have learned that. And then later on, probably like thousands of years later on, realized, oh shit, I can I can put a fish in this. And now it's better and it tastes better and it's you know not going to get me sick as often and it's easier to digest and the bones are a little bit softer and like so on and so on. So the uh, the control and use of fire goes back before cooking, but cooking itself was a technological innovation, very similar to any kind of like stoneworking. You know, we we have a uh, uh, two point six to two point eight million years ago, we have some of the first earliest stone tools called the Oldowan tools, where they just broke a chunk off a rock and had a chopper. There are Lamequian tools, which are way older than that, but they're kind of scant. I don't know if you can call them tools or not. I'm not a fan of them. Doesn't matter. Um, but definitely the old one tools, one uh, two point six, two point eight million years ago, these choppy things. And then after a million years, we learned you can sharpen both sides of the rock, and now you have a hand axe. And so, like, it's it's the exact same thing. We learned that this resource does one thing. We fuck with it for like a million years, and then we learn it does another thing. That that's all it is. Okay, but so, but how does that get them to actually controlling it? like and being able to create it at will i mean that's something you can do like a variety of ways you can do that with with you know spinning a stick you can do that with a a a, a plow type thing where you like grind a stick into another stick you can do that with flint and a little piece of metal which you can find raw metal on the ground type of time like there's a million different ways you can make fire um, I'm you know, don't ask me. I'm not a survival guy, but like there are lots of ways you can do it. And even if you didn't make it every time, you can find fire out in the wild. It's very likely the first time that you know fire was discovered, so to speak, would have been you know maybe a lightning strike or something. And then they went out and they found this, or maybe they were you know yeah. hanging out near a volcano and stuck a stick in there. Um, but like once they learn what it is, it's just a matter of of technological advancement to get to the point where they can actually like control it and use it. Um, I wouldn't presume to know how that process worked because those types of tools, number one, don't fossilize. You know, you, it's, it's very difficult to find wooden tools that are like well-preserved for a very long period of time. And also they almost certainly were on fire. <laughs> so like they broke down uh, and there weren't something <laughs> that we could have kept and like looked at. Um, but we can look at indigenous cultures today that, that still are able to control fire and make it at will. And so like, it's, you know, very likely, you know, similar business. Oh. Does that answer your question there, Ethan? Or is that, that, you know, good enough for today? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you got a more calls to get to. So yeah. Um, I'll digest that, and if I have uh, any more questions, follow-ups, I'll uh, that. Hey, I strongly recommend looking up. There's a channel on YouTube called Gut Sick Gibbon. Um, Gut Sick, like you're sick to your stomach, and then Gibbon, like the ape. Um, and she did a video uh, a little while ago. Just look up, like, first cooks or, like, oldest cooking. Um, and she did a video about the oldest cooking site that we've ever found, which is that 800,000-year-old one. And that paper was just published at the end of last year. So like it's it's a recent. I think she published it in November, um, and, and you can go watch that. She she dissects that whole paper, and it'll tell you about the earliest evidence that we have of of our ancestors cooking food. Okay. I hope that helps, man. Well, have an awesome you, rest of your uh, day. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Hey, no worries. Thanks so much for calling in. Sorry, I had to speed through. 
All right, next up, we've got Mark in Atlanta uh, wants to ask about the classical subdivision of human instincts. I don't know if I'm going to be answer, able to answer this one. We'll see. Mark, you're on the line. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Porce. How are you? It's good to meet you. I'm pretty good, man. So I'm I'm not phenomenal with like you know uh, behavioral biology or ethology, so I'm not sure how good I'll be at this question, but I would love to try it. Okay, it's a it's a very general question. Um, I I am at a point in my life where I'm understanding myself and my species on a paradigm of instincts. And yeah. the when I Google this and I research it. There's sort of a layman, a classical triumvirate of uh, sex, security, and society, or the will to procreate, the will to survive, and then the social instinct. And so I'm, I'm asking you as a layman to a professional, how complete is that, or how incomplete is that? Like, like when I hear, like, what... When I read um, specialists talk about that subdivision, they say like it's incomplete, and and they'll note exceptions that don't fall under those three categories. And um, the like the like when I look at other social mammals play, I see mm -hmm. cubs like uh, fox cubs or lion cubs or antelope, young antelopes, the, the, that play, it's always honing um, predation skills or is, uh, escape skills. So to me, that looks like survival. Yep. And so I'm curious, yep. like, in your opinion, ha pertaining to those three s categories, how incomplete is that? Like, it's important to me because it, it just, shit just so much makes sense when I look at it. Yeah. In that, on that paradigm, oh. I, and I, I don't want to keep going on. Go, go ahead. Oh, no, Wait. you're fine. You're fine. This is see. This is the problem with with the the whole field of ethology. When we look at inst uh, behavior and instinct and things like this, it, it's you're learning to speak with this animal in its own language is what you're doing. So, like for example, you you do a a neural probe uh, and and in some you know a deep electrical brain stimulation in some rat and you've got this rat here in this cage with this mouse and you stimulate this part of his brain and the rat jumps on the mouse and just rips it to shreds and you're like oh shit we found the homicidal maniac part of the brain cool and then you put it in a human and you're like we're gonna see what happens and you stimulate this part of the human brain and the human jumps up and runs the fridge and just demolishes a sandwich and you go oh Rats eat mice. We we stimulated hunger, not violent rage. Duh. And you do the same thing with okay. a lion. You stimulate this part of the lion's brain. The lion does this with his claws. And you go, aha, we got the finger wiggling part of the brain. You do it to a human, and the human goes, fuck off. And you're like, oh, no. Lions flare their claws when they're aggravated. This is the agitation part of the brain. You know what I mean? So, like, when we look at these things, um, th this is why the field of ethology is so fascinating, is that when we look at these behaviors, like you gave a great example, play and tickling, we're like, oh, this is clearly just for fun. This is a wonderful thing. But tickling is actually teaching you to fight off an attacker and keep them away from uh -huh. your soft bits, like your neck and under your arms and your stomach. It's teaching you how to fight that cool. off while also being something that makes you laugh and happy. So it's something you want to engage in more. Um, okay. And so like... It's really hard to draw a line and say, okay, this is for sure this thing and this is for sure that thing. Um, uh, and and okay. a lot of the time with behaviors like that, the closer we look at them, the more interesting they get. And there's also, it's really important to point out that there is such a thing as nonsense. You know, this is one of the biggest problems with like uh, archaeology is, oh my gosh, this pot was broken in this particular way in this place. And surely there was some significance as opposed to, some shitty ass kid was random by and knocked over a pot and broke it. And that's it. And it laid there forever. Like, um, there's, there's proximal reasons for things and there's distal reasons for things. So when we talk about sex, you know, why, when we're having sex, if it takes nine months to produce a baby, why are we in such a hurry while we're doing it? Why are we, you know, panting and sweating and running out of breath? Is it because we're driven by this fervent desire to carry on our species and to reproduce and pass on our genes and our legacy? Or does it just fuck, it feels good and we want to do it more. And like, you know, so um, 
I, I'm certainly not, you know, I, I've heard of the things you're talking about, but I haven't studied them enough to like give like a really in-depth answer as to like whether I think that classification system is valid or good enough. That's way outside of my wheelhouse and I'm, I'm not qualified to say, but I can say that, that, but what I can say is that for sure, when we look at these, you know, when we look at animal behaviors, um, it, it's all about, like I said, speaking to that animal in its own language and learning the context of what those behaviors actually mean. And very often we find that it's a little bit more interesting than just saying they had to do this to survive. They had to do this to reproduce. Does that make any sense? Okay. Can, real quick, yeah, real quick, real quick. Mark, 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 Mark. Mark, can you try, uh, can you try moving your headset away by a few more inches or something? Cause even when I manually okay. turn your audio down, when you talk, it's like a razor is on. Oh no. That yeah. sucks. It's awful. Um, okay. Is that better? It's, no, it's still awful. Do you want to try? Uh, what are, are you talking directly in the headset? Or are you on speaker? What are you on? I'm on my handset. <laughs> I'm on my cell phone. I guess, so, wow. I guess for the first time ever, let's try speaker phone to fix something. <laughs> let's see if speaker phone <laughs> sounds better. I'm on speaker phone now. It, that... it at least isn't. Yeah, it's not great, but it's at least not attacking our ears. So I think, uh, yeah, I think let's, let's use there's, this. There's more uh, ambient noise, but less part. clipping. Yeah. Okay, I will say this part very quickly so that it's cool. less irksome. Thanks, bud. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so I wanted to reframe it like this. So it, when I see a snake, when I see reptiles who, to the best of my understanding, don't have the mammalian or the, the bird brain that I have, um, whatever the 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 right terminology for that is and and so Mm -hmm. a snake like fucks and and survives they don't have that social the the non-social mammal and so what makes sense to me is that i'm a social mammal so i have this third instinct that is in addition to just the fucking and surviving that i that the non-social animals have Um, Mm -hmm. but, and so I'm a social mammal and I have this third social instinct and that, that just, it makes so much sense to me to use those categories. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I know you said that you're not like, you don't feel like you're qualified. So I guess reframe when I reframe it that way, is it still, do you find that overly simplistic? No. So, so there's a couple of things. Um, can you see the, the screen? Can you see me or are you just on the phone? I'm just on the phone. Okay. Well then later. I won't get it. I, I, okay. Yeah. Well, let me go grab, just hang on for one second. I'm going to grab something it's right over here. Just, just in case oh, it could help a little bit. So I'm going to explain what this is. So you don't have to see it, but just in case anybody is watching, like this might be helpful. Um, so here I hold in my hand a, a model of a human brain. Um, and what's really cool about this is that if you split it down the middle, you can see that the brain has evolved from the inside out. So we have like this really simple, you know, down here in the the, the, the brain stem and the medulla oblongata and all the, you have like these really, really central functions. And then right up in here, you've got your, your, your amygdala and you've got your basal ganglia and you've got your limbic system up here in the middle. And you've got like these really, really deep animal functions of this is where, you know, I am hungry, I am horny, I am scared, I am angry. Like the very, when you look at animal language, so to speak, at its most fundamental, that's what animals are saying 99.9% of the time. I'm hungry, I'm happy, I'm horny, I'm scared, I'm whatever. That's all you've got. And that all lives in here. And then this outermost part out here, this, this, this exterior cortex, that is where you get the really deep thinky thinky parts, especially up here in the very front, the frontal lobe is where you get like where you live as a person. You know what I mean? Um, And so like when you talk about the evolution from snake or lizard or whatever up to, you know, a mammal up to a a primate and whatnot, that's the direction that this is going. It's going from the inside Mm -hmm. out. And we get, you know, this very simple lizard brain in here. And then you get more of a complex and more of a complex as you go along. Um, and uh, if you really want to have fun looking this up, look up the term uh, rhinocephalon. Uh, literally means nose brain. When we first started doing neurological research, we studied rats and rats. Like 
their uh, olfactory bulbs, the, the, the smelling centers of their brain, are like a huge, huge part of their brain and because they're mainly driven by olfaction. Um, and so like for a long time, we tried to relate that to humans and we found that it's not the same. But like we, you can learn so much about like not only the history of neuroscience, but also what we actually know about what makes us a person in our brains. If you look up that term, rhinocephalon and like the evolution from there. Anyway, but I will. the point is, if you were to look at this one particular part of the brain, this is one of my favorite parts of the brain. Um, so here, I'm going to hold the brain sideways. You're seeing the side view here. And you've got up here is the frontal lobe. Up here at the top is the parietal lobe. Over here in the back is the occipital lobe. And then this on the side is the temporal lobe. If you stick, you see this long cut here, this sulcus, this longitudinal sulcus here between the uh, uh, temporal and the parietal lobes, you split that open and you find this invagination of cerebral tissue where the brain folds in on itself. And inside there is this little lump, which you can see here now on the screen, I'm dropping brain parts everywhere, dude. This little lump right here, which I've got on the screen is called the insula or the insular cortex. And what that does is it handles disgust. So if I tell you right now, Mark, to think about a strawberry that you've left out in the sun for a few days up in your windowsill, and that strawberry has gotten all slimy. It's not really red. It's more brown now. It's got some white and blue fuzz growing on it, and you reach down and touch it, and it kind of squishes. It doesn't really firm anymore, and you pick it up in this pool of sickly sweet vinegar smelling brown goo kind of sticks out of it and pulls up and you squish that into your teeth and the smell of ferment just hits you when you think about that you start to feel sick to your stomach right that's your insular okay. cortex working and that's what it does when you eat rotten nasty food or even think about rotten nasty food your insular cortex lights up and it makes you puke that's what it does is it protects you from this but what it also yeah. does it protects you from rotten, nasty behavior. If you think about genocide and rape and incest and all the stuff we were talking about with Andrew a minute ago, when you think about people behaving badly, there's a reason why you say, ugh, that makes me sick, because it literally does. It turns your stomach to think about hurting someone in this way, because the same part of your brain that handles visceral disgust also handles moral disgust. So somewhere along the line of human evolution, in fact, most, well, sorry? I said, I I'm sorry, that is so cool. It's, it's wild. So somewhere along the line of mammalian evolution, because lots and lots of mammals show moral behaviors, somewhere along the line of mammalian evolution, we get this development where we, you know, evolution is not so much of an inventor as it is a tinkerer. So instead of developing a new part of the brain to give us morality, nature just took some duct tape and slapped it on the insular cortex that already does this. And that's this thing that you now have in your brain that does this. So you're talking about the difference between the lizard brain or the bird brain or whatever up to yours. That's a huge part of it. And there are other parts of the brain that are also really important for empathy and things like that. But that one's my favorite because especially now we see this. Anytime you see genocide in the world, it's because somebody took advantage of that part of the brain. They don't say these are people that we want to exterminate. They say these are cockroaches. They say these are invaders. Yeah, they, they say these are you know, this insurgents. This is, exactly. By dehumanizing someone and making you have a visceral uh, a disgust response before it gets up here to the thinky thinky parts where you think, oh, I wonder what kind of person this is. I wonder what their favorite food is. I wonder what kind of Girl Scout cookies they like, you know? Those are the things where you humanize somebody. But if you can take somebody, like let's say, for example, you have like a group of people, like say maybe LGBT people and the people who support them. And rather than saying, hey, whether they should not have human rights, that's a complicated discussion. Let's just call them all pedophiles and groomers. Yeah. Now, you don't have to treat these people like people. You don't even have to think about them as people. You just feel the disgust response immediately. And now it's very easy to justify dehumanizing them, ostracizing them, or even killing them. And this is exactly what we see in Rwanda. This is exactly what we see in, in, in uh, Nazi Germany. This is exactly what we see in, in every other case of like, a, a rampant destruction of human life in history. Um, so yeah, it, 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 what separates you from all these other things is something that you can learn to take advantage of and make you a better, saner, more moral person. Or it can be hijacked yeah. and turn you into a monster. And that's fun to think about. Cool, man. That's a great answer. I, I, know, you, I know you're pressed for time, so I'll let you go. I, I, I very much appreciate 
your response and I love your work and uh, have a good night. No worries. I'm sorry. I couldn't give you more. Like I said, this is something that's a little bit outside my wheelhouse. (laughs) Okay. Well, I hope so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I don't, I didn't want to go into too much more detail, but that, those are things that I'm comfortable with, like, you know, do it, but yeah, I got to pick brain chunks up off the floor now. (laughs) All right. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you. Take care, man. All All right. Good night. Good night. I've literally got brain all over the floor. And you know what? I'm okay with it. Uh, I've worked in enough cadaver labs. This is not not too crazy. All right, last call we've got on the line is uh, David. He was a theist. He wants to talk about morality, God. So- Didn't throw up, though. I've been chugging that water, and I got real burpy. Um, David, David wants to talk about morality, God, science, and whatever. Uh, we're going to spend as much time as we can on this because we got a lot of super chats, but I want to hear what you have to say. David, you're on the line. How are you doing today? Hey, what's up, Forrest? Uh, been watching. How's it going, man? Not too long. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, I've been listening to what you guys have been talking about. I mean, honestly, I just called on a whim. It's like the first time I've called, and uh, I mean, I didn't really have a topic to talk about, but now that I hear you guys talking about morality, and uh, I just feel like what you guys are talking about is wrong, and not not because. Um, I mean, you, you explain it correctly, but morality, you know, it's been defined over time because of, let's say, uh, you know, your parents and their parents, they taught them, uh, they taught their kids how to be moral and, you know, either using the Bible at one point or not. Uh, I feel that we can't really say what morality would be like, um, because in this timeline, we we have uh, the Bible that basically taught people in the past how to be more moral. Um, I feel that that's a solid argument on, in, in my uh, case. And I don't know what you have to say. Uh, so you think that, that the Bible, know. the Bible is what taught us to be moral or just certain people? Uh, well, if I can explain it properly, cause you know, like I said, I, I didn't expect to be calling. I'm not prepared or anything, but uh, you know, people that's fine. are more. Well, I remember but, I saw you in the chat saying that there is a God, and now you're saying that the Bible was a source would, of morality. I would like to focus also, in on that if we can. Also weird that you're hiding behind. I wasn't expecting to call when you got mad when your first call wasn't answered and then started saying that you win by I default. Not mad. I was not mad. No, no, don't even. <laughs> I was, look, I messed around. So I, come on, why would I be mad? Well, maybe um, use your words honestly and everything will go better. It's fine. Right, let's yeah, let's but... let's just dig into what you got because I don't want to. I, I want to get through this as much as I can, and I don't want to. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to get too far off track. So you said that God is real, and then you just said just now, and I want to make sure I'm saying this properly. So correct me if I'm wrong. That the Bible right. was a source of morality. Is that right? Yes. 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 So did it, do you believe that what's written in the Bible, the commandments from God, are all moral teachings that we should uphold? Oh. Definitely, definitely. Do you think that there's anything in the Bible that God said to do that is immoral or wrong? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, Yeah, um, of course. So you do think that God has made commandments that were immoral before? Uh, I don't think there are any immoral commandments uh, if you read them. That's that's what I'm asking. Do you think that any time in the Bible when God said to do something, that it was morally incorrect, that it was a wrong thing to do? Well, by today's standards, of course. And even back then, it was it was not a good thing to do. But again, we are humans. And as humans, we have our own desires and, uh, you know, goals. And so he allowed things to happen because of that. It was going to happen regardless of whether he allowed it or not. And he knew that. So he just said, okay, well, I'm going to put rules down. I can't prevent you from doing cool. it. So it's going to happen. And he, I mean, does that not okay. make sense? So when you we know? talk about how in the Bible, in the Bible, there are very cle- mm-hmm. clear rules for slavery, how to buy slaves, right. how much to pay for them, how hard to beat them. There's very clear, there's a commandment from God where in fact it happens a few times where God says, wipe out these people, kill every man, every woman, every infant, every baby, and all of their livestock. Keep the virgin girls for yourself as sex slaves. God tells them to do that. There's, there's parts of the Bible that advocate for murdering your own family. There's a part of the Bible where I think it was Aaron's sons 
put the wrong kind of incense in a burner and God killed them with fire and then told Aaron, you're not allowed to grieve them, otherwise I'll kill you too. So when he did all those evil things, you're saying that that was just a product of the times because humans were going to be evil anyway. So God said, go ahead and be evil because they were just gone. Well, it's not go ahead and be evil. It's people were going to do it anyways. So he set rules down. And as for, I mean, I understand that. Why did God cause the flood again? Hmm? Why did God send the flood in Genesis? Because people were evil. And it's true. I mean, we can see it so nowadays. So he I mean, can't stop. So when people that. were evil that time, he drowned them all to death, including the babies. All the babies drowned to death because they were evil. But now later, when humans are evil and keep slaves and things, that's just something he's going to learn to live with. Well, the thing is that I understand that from your standpoint, with today's view on morality, you see it and you see in the past and you're like, wow, I can't believe that happened. But I mean, mm. look at Hitler did, for example. He, well, I mean, did you, were you, would you be okay with Hitler being alive after what he did to, you know, five, six, seven more uh, million people? Or would you prefer that he dies for his crime, that he dies, die for his crimes? I don't believe in an afterlife. So I think when Hitler died, his suffering ended. I would much prefer that he lived a very long life atoning for what he did rather than getting the easy coward's way out by taking oh, yeah. his own life. Makes sense, of course, of course. Uh, yeah, but besides that, I mean, we have a view now on morality that was not the same thousands of years ago, you know what I'm saying? So back then, slavery was mm -hmm. common, you know, killing, all that stuff was common. Like, so what we but see was now it correct? Is was it morally right? Was it morally right? Saying? I mean, who are we to say that We're now? human We're beings like, who oh, understand the lives time. and sufferings of other human beings. That's who we are to say. I understand that slavery is wrong, not because anybody told me it's wrong, but because I understand human well-being, and I understand the concept of freedom. Yeah. So because I'm not a fascist, yeah. I don't believe in slavery, and I can say that any time ever slavery ever happened, it was wrong. And if your God is all-knowing and all-powerful, he should also have known that it was wrong and used his infinite power to stop it. God has several commandments yeah, about not eating pork and shellfish. He should have also mm -hmm. said, don't un hu use humans as farming equipment. Well, again, I mean, those are different times. Uh, as for what you say, a lot of atheists, uh, you know, no offense, I mean, I mean that in, in a respectful way. Uh, they will say things like, how come God didn't just do this? And I mean, if you read the Bible, it basically, I mean, there is a plan, you know, quotation marks. I, I used to be Christian, okay? I used to be Christian, so get, keep mm -hmm. that in mind. And in, it says that basically that uh, there is a plan, I guess, right? Or whatever. And I don't know why or, or whatever, but if, if it says that there is a plan, why would he come down and ruin the plan by just fixing everything? You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's one. So what one you're way saying that, is God has a plan. God has a plan for mm -hmm. us. And part of that plan, a necessary part of his plan is that people are mm -hmm. sold into slavery. Children are raped. People get murdered, what? disease, famine, war, bone cancer. That's all a necessary part that's of the plan. Human. That's because humans being human, and it, it's it's called free will. You know, it's not his plan. Like, oh, he wants it to happen because he he made it happen. No, it's just that's that's just free will as it is. You know, and so that's what, to that's be clear, that, humans have free will. Mm -hmm. Humans have free will. We can mm -hmm. do whatever we want. Yeah. And it's right. so important that God maintain free will that He is not going to say, "Don't do slavery. Do not have humans as property. That's wrong." However, free will is not that big of a deal when he tells you 12 different times in the Bible, don't eat shrimp. That's a big fucking deal that God needs to make sure free will doesn't matter. He's going to tell you several times not to eat shrimp. But when it comes to slaves, you got to figure that out. Is that about what he's saying? That's different. That's no, that's, 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 uh, that's a different to his people, to his, to the Jews, right? That is specifically for the Jews. That's everybody else is just doing whatever the heck they, want, they wanted to do. You know, they so why didn't he tell the slaves. Jews not to keep slaves? Why was it so important for the Jews to not eat shrimp, but it was okay for them to have some slaves? 
because shrimp is a dirty fruit. Uh, I guess that you know it could have caused diseases or whatever, and it was just people. Oh, you know, of course, them. you don't want to you don't want to get dysentery. I mean, fuck, man, you could get diarrhea from eating a shrimp. You might as well have some slaves. That's right. totally fine. Again, that's different because the the whole slavery thing was happening anyways. It was going to happen anyways. So people were eating shrimp anyway. Would grow, huh? Do you think that everybody stopped eating shrimp because it says not to in the Bible? People were oh, eating shrimp not. before the of Bible. People were eating shrimp all the time. Why didn't yeah. he say, you know well, what, fuck, bro, I wish they wouldn't eat shrimp, but I'm going to let them eat the shrimp as long as they stop owning people as property? I uh, See, we're, we're adding some logic here that is not congruent with the situation. Like, you know, this is... We're yeah, thinking God doesn't have logic, right? It's completely different, huh? Yeah, no, you're right. We're applying logic, which means it doesn't apply to God anymore because it, this idea doesn't fit with logic. No, that's that's completely different. God See, is, is that all knowing. Has... Mm-hmm. If God is all knowing and God is a good being, if God is good and knows everything and is all powerful and he doesn't stop that kind of evil, then he's an asshole. And if you really want to say, well, you know, it's, it's human free will. We got to let humans do whatever the fuck they want to do. Humans can do anything that they want to do because it's free will. Then why does he have all of those other commandments about not wearing fabrics of mixed cloth? and not cutting the sides of your beard, and not touching the skin of a dead pig. Why is there a commandment in the Bible that if two men are fighting and a woman breaks them up and accidentally touches one of their penises, she has to have her hand cut off? That's a real, actual law in the Bible. Why is that important, but don't rape children isn't important? Why is that not a part of it? Wait, wait, wait. So we're we're talking about, (laughs) this is the thing. You're acting as if God is like completely good and he can't do no wrong. It says he's a perfect being. He's a mixture of everything. How can, why does everybody mm-hmm. believe that he's just good and, and, and all that? Why do people say that? I don't understand. He's not all good. I mean, perfect is not just one emotion or one personality. It's it, perfection actually means a mixture of everything and the, and the ability to And he's not that, worthy of worship. Then he's not I mean, worthy of worship. Then that's, that's, of course, that is your decision to not worship or, or follow him. But again, in the end, if he's perfect and all-knowing, then he knows what he's doing. We cannot even understand why he's doing I can't understand why he's doing things the way he's doing them. If I could go back and Let say, me ask hey, you another you know, question no really quick. I think it's really important. Yeah, Do you believe in hell? Do you believe in hell? Uh, no, not at all. Okay. Do you believe in any afterlife at all? I do, yeah, of course. I mean, there's so much, uh, there's so there's so many things that have happened spiritually to so many people, atheists, non-atheists. Uh, uh, like, how can so how then? Can what's the point of be- I'm not I'm not I'm not going to uh, debate the afterlife. Yeah. I'm just trying to get an understanding of where of you're coming from. What is the right. purpose of this plan that God has laid out? Well, again, I mean, if you look into the past, into the Bible, it basically. You know, the Jews chose him and he chose them as his people, right? And uh, I guess the point, if you look, I look at it from a Jewish perspective, where the, where the point is for people to just become better uh, and, and not kill, themselves, kill each other, you know, and not hurt others and whatever. And, you know, hopefully it, it, it turns out that way. You know, I don't know the, 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 the future, but I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be nice and good to people. And I know that I mess around, but I'm, I'm just messing around with the chat, so they probably think that I'm an asshole or something, but I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm just. It happens when you act like an asshole. Oh, well, I wasn't acting like an asshole. I was just saying some dumb things because. Yeah, I except for all that, that asshole acting family. you were doing, but other than that, yeah. So what? Oh my God. What <laughs> you just said was that the whole yes, point of his plan is to teach the Jewish people how to behave and hopefully get to where they don't hurt each other anymore, and he's going to do that by not only allowing slavery, but telling them exactly how to keep slaves and how hard to beat them and how to sell them and pass them on to your children so that eventually they'll figure out not to do that anymore, even though God told them to. And that's a part of his plan to make them better people. Is that that about the summary of it? No, because the uh, the way you mention it, yeah, it's harsher the way you say it, but in reality, it's, it's he he put rules down because people were going to keep slaves anyways at that time 
Uh, there were also let me, let me ask you a different way. Let me ask you a different way because I think you're missing the point that I'm trying to make. No, I I'm asking you. I know what you're saying. Uh -huh. I'm, yeah, I promise you don't. I'm asking you genuinely, mm -hmm. right? And I have two questions, actually. This is the first one. I'm asking yeah, you, when, in what context, when mm -hmm. is it ever okay to own another human being as property? Well, I mean, in today's standards, in my and in my own uh, I'm opinion, about standards, never. I'm asking you, when is it yes, okay? Never in my in my opinion, never. Cool. Agreed. I I agree with you. It's never okay. Why couldn't God do exactly what you just did and say, "Hey, remember when I said don't eat shellfish? Also, don't keep slaves." Because in that time, there were people doing it anyways with, without God. People and in were, that time, they were eating people eating shellfish. In that time, there were people eating shellfish. Yeah. So course. why was it more important for him to stop one and not the other? I mean, I don't understand why the, they, they don't even really, really correlate with each other. Again, people were having slaves anyways, eating shellfish. Uh, he set rules. Like Two things are happening. One of them is right? eating tasty food, and the other is owning humans. <laughs> Which one do you think should be the priority of putting an end to? Well, again, I mean, the slavery, of course, but again, it was going to happen anyways. And if you Great. can't intervene... You are more then, than the God you believe in. Huh? Well, I mean, that doesn't... You I mean, are morally perfect. superior. I... I uh-huh. That's, that's what, what you I'm think. I mean, that's... I mean... Let me ask I, you another question. Do you know how many people mm -hmm. starve to death every single day? Yeah, I know. I'm not ignoring those facts. I'm a very asking, do you know the person. actual numbers? Do you know the actual numbers is what I'm asking you? Probably in the, in the multi-millions. Every single day, every 24 hours, 25,000 people, including over 10,000 children, starve to death. So here's like, the question for like you. In... It's over 1,000 people an hour. In the time that I've been on this show... More than 2,000 people have starved to death. If your God can stop that and doesn't, what does that make your God? I mean, I don't understand. Why are you putting those kinds of questions here? Again, we are talking about Because you said that he has a plan. You said that he has mm -hmm. a plan, and that all these commandments right. are part of this plan. I'm telling you, right. any plan that involves 10,000 children a day dying in terror and agony is a shit plan. Right, but I mean, again, like, you look into the past, and these commandments were set, we're supposed to fix each other and work for each other, but what are we doing? We're going to war. We're going to war in the name of God, which he doesn't, he doesn't support any of these wars that the, the Catholic churches and and the Christian churches or whatever have gone after. So again, you no, have some flaws only in the Bible when he had several wars that he not only endorsed but directly commanded, and he said, yeah. "Make sure you kill the babies as well." So God was well, all I mean, about again, killing babies, right? He, he's a perfect being. He's not moral. He's not. You think that he's supposed to be morally perfect and good? That's ridiculous. You can't be perfect and just be all good. You know what I mean? So. I wouldn't know where to begin so, on those you, spots. Like, so you mm -hmm. think that killing babies and keeping slaves is part of perfection? Myself, of course not. But again, I do not understand how he but thinks. If God he ordered the killing human. of babies and the keeping of slaves. So you think that Rather because than, God said mm -hmm. to kill babies and keep slaves, that makes him more perfect? Do you know what perfection is? Do you know what perfection is? Answer yeah. that question. I have a concept. Yeah, answer it. Sure. I mean, the concept that has to be the, uh, the answer. Are you asking me to give concept? a definition of perfection? Uh, I guess. I mean, yeah, try your best. Something without flaw. Something with every possible redeeming good quality. Something that has no issue or error. That's, that's what I would that's concept a, as like perfection. That's a human definition, and that's flawed. So you understand the beyond human definition of perfection, and that happens to include killing babies. Come on. 
that is the way I can't even answer that question because honestly, that's a flawed question. You can't say, oh, you believe this, so you must believe this. No, I mean, again, if there you is a said plan, that, I'm not putting words in your mouth, dude. You said that no, when God right. said that we should kill the babies of these other people that he commanded us to go to war against, you said that that's part of his perfection. He's perfect, so he's not just good, he's also evil. He's everything because he's perfect. And what I'm saying is the evil outweighs the good strongly, and even if it didn't, just a little bit of infanticide still makes this God unworthy of worship. Now let me be very clear. I don't think this God exists, and I'm very happy that there's no evidence for this God. There's no reason to believe in this God. But even if you could prove to me that this God was real, I would be right here on this show saying that he's a fucking monster and does not deserve any praise or any worship whatsoever. If I have the opportunity to save 10,000 children from starving to death, and I don't, I'm a dick. And if God is all-powerful and can end that in an instant and doesn't do it because of free will, which he violates several times in the Bible, by the way, then he's a dick and he's useless. Well, he didn't violate it because he left afterwards, I guess, or he's just waiting or something. In the book of Exodus, he specifically violates the free will of the Pharaoh. In the book of Exodus, it says several times the Pharaoh wanted to let the Jews go, and God hardened his heart so that he wouldn't let the Jews go, and then God got to swing his dick with another plague. He took away the Pharaoh's free will so that he could continue showing off how strong he was. He's a monster. I mean, that's that's the way you look at it, and that's the way, I mean... I don't know why you guys look at it that way. What did I say that was incorrect? That's That's not a view. Me calling him a monster, you could call a subjective view. But what did I say that was incorrect? How do you justify him taking away someone's free will so that he can punish all the people of Egypt and then kill all the firstborn babies of the Egyptians? He killed all of the babies babies because he took away the free will of the pharaoh so that he didn't do what god wanted him to do how is that a good person how is that something that you would worship look i those questions are are so flawed i can't even answer them because they they're just you're trying to put what did i say that was untrue what did i say that was untrue what part of that is biblically inaccurate no, I mean, it's, it's accurate. I'm not denying anything. I'm just saying it's the logic Great. that we're using. So, so here's the time. story. Here's the story in the Bible, and this is the whole thing. God told the Pharaoh mm-hmm. to let the slaves go. The Pharaoh said, okay, I will. God changed his mind for him, taking away his free will. And then the Pharaoh said, mm-hmm. okay, I guess I won't. So God killed all the babies in Israel as punishment for the decision that God forced him to make. That is biblically accurate. Do you worship a God that would do those types of things? Look, you know, we didn't exist in that time. We don't know what the Pharaoh was doing. It's a yes or no question. That is a yes or no question, Dave. Would you worship a God that took away someone's free will and then killed children to punish them for the decision that they were forced to make? No, no, no. That's a yes or no question. You're trying to back me into I'm trying to here, give you, get you to make part. one fucking <laughs> honest answer, dude. I'm trying to get no, no, you to I've give you, one honest answer. I've given you tons of honest answers. And the thing is that you cannot... You haven't. That kind all of- you keep saying... All you keep saying is slavery was okay in this time because they were different Uh people and God can't stop children from dying and God told them to kill people because it was a different time. And by our standards, sure, it's wrong to kill babies, but when God did, it was okay. Those aren't honest answers. I'm asking you for a simple yes or no. Do you think that it's appropriate to worship a God who kills babies at all, ever. Just any any part of that. Take away the whole rest of the story. God killed every first baby in Egypt. Was that a good thing for him to do? Well, I mean, today's standards, and in my opinion, of course not. But again, we're done. We we're done, David. What is going we're on? Absolutely Wait, done. Let me, oh let, me, let me have two Jesus questions. Jesus of Christ. Land. Before you hang up, I want to ask oh, two I questions. I dropped him. You dropped him. Oh, you want to bring shit. him back? Wait, did you drop him, drop him, or did you put him in the queue? All right. 
No, no I fine. dropped him. It's fine. I was just going to ask to the first question was going to be, you said you used to be Christian. What the fuck are you now? Uh, I just, I, I was Christ, so man. curious about what fucking religion this guy was. And then the second one, because mm-hmm. there's certain keywords and things that stuck out. I feel I'm going to pull the chat. Uh, Okay, actually, I'm not going to say which... Well, it's kind of obvious by the context of the question, but here's the poll of the chat. Was... What was his name? David? Was it David? What was it? David, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was David. Was David for real or a troll? And we're going to say your options are real, that's really him, or nah, but pose lobby strong. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's just man, I I would have done on that that call for a long time, but we're already way past. We're trying to be yeah, done yeah. in two hours, and that's not going to happen. But like, just, no, it's not good. like it's not good. I can't handle. It. If I can ask you thirty times, yes <laughs> or no, is killing babies good? And all you have the balls to say is, well, in our standards today, I got all right of it. <laughs> just god damn, dude, grow a fucking spine and call your god what it is. Like, if you can't even answer a simple question, that's what kills me. Like, it, it doesn't matter. If you think that's a good thing to do, have the cojones to fucking say it. Yeah, no, it was right. It was good yeah. for God to do that. And then we can have that conversation. But fucking over and over, for how long is that? Like a, a fucking 10-minute call of just, <laughs> oh, I don't know. That. It was all right then. I get, he can't take away their free will. They better not eat a fucking shrimp. But if they keep a person as farming equipment and beat them until they die... Ah, uh, what are you gonna do? I mean, come on. I uh, oh my gosh. I sent a text to a group chat I'm in, uh, and was just like, "Hey, is there a named fallacy for the argument God's way are so advanced we can't understand him?" And uh, y'all know him as Prophet of Zod. Wrote back the "I literally give up" fallacy, and I think that's probably pretty right. That's pretty good. That's Yo. pretty good. Zod's Zod's so cool. I like that guy. Uh, you know what happens useless, almost bro. every week that you're on, and and I and we're not what? co-hosting. You get one or two mm. calls in this week too, where I go, "Where the fuck are these people when I'm on?" I feel like I feel like I just get the repeat people and the and the and you know I'm 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 a little bit more um, uh, Robin on Sundays, but at least we're doing these Tuesday shows now, and we're we're gonna start doing because I wanna soon. Did you see the uh, yeah the intro I made for I it? I loved it. Thank loved you. Loved it. It was so good. If somebody if somebody uh, sends a fifty dollars super chat, I will show everyone who's watching here a sneak peek of the new intro uh, for a new show we have called "Cause I Wanna." Um, but but you you know you got to pay for it, otherwise you got to wait. Uh, you ready for soups? I'm ready for soups, man. Let's do soups. You know what? See no I soup for you. This. No, I'm just kidding. Of course. <laughs> oh, <son> of bitch. <laughs> I've been watching Seinfeld again. Shame uh, on you. Why don't you? I'll I'll, I'll take over reading because I know you like that usually. But uh, in a second, I'm gonna get it queued yeah. up as though somebody is going to give the fifty dollars super chat to see the intro. Just um, just have hoping, ready. hoping and praying. Our audience uh, is so, pretty great. Uh, Sabiv. Sabiv Golden Calf says, any advice for teaching my nephew basic skepticism slash critical thinking without him getting in trouble for questioning the super religious people raising him? Um, so like my big thing is don't teach them what to think, teach them how to think. So like if they ask a question, don't just be like, here's the answer and, and here's the, 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 you know, the scientific reasonable answer. Ask, okay, well, how are we going to figure that out? Let's look into it. Let's check it out. Let's get on Google together. And, you know, you asked me how old is the Earth. Let's look it up. It says uh, how old is the Earth. Oh, well, here it says the Earth is 4.6 billion years old. But let's double check really quick. So let's look at this, this other. Let's go to, like, you know, Scientific American or some cool. Oh, wow, look at this. Like, all these people are, are saying the same thing with evidence to back it up. Wow, interesting. I wonder how they know that. Let's learn a little bit about that. And then not only are you teaching them, like I said, how to think, you're giving them the background of the information, they're learning the history of how this stuff was found out, they're learning about like why we know what we know, not just what we know, and then the next time the you know, super religious person says, oh yeah, a fucking snake talked and, and gave a, a rib woman a magical fruit that taught her good and evil, and now we're all fucked, they can go look that up and be like, okay, so why do we know that? Why do you think that? What evidence is there for that? The same exact way is 
when you answered any other question about, you know, oh, why is corn look like this? Or what any whatever ridiculous question that kids ask. Um, yeah, just go through the process of learning with them rather than just telling them something. And that way they'll have those skills for a long time. Uh, okay, I have two things. Uh, one, uh, I, I've been saying for a long time, I think since my first year, people would ask me, like, what would be the greatest thing, like greatest form of what my channel could turn into? And I literally said, I would love to be behind the production. And I'm realizing now that if we can make this channel profitable enough to basically blackmail you into moving here, we would have an incredible host for this idea. I have always wanted to produce a children's show that basically inadvertently mm -hmm. teaches you skepticism. Um, not, it's <laughs> not, not as like the, the direct, still making it a very like edible show for kids and not like a secret that we're like secretly trying to, but like you're exposing people yeah. to, it, regardless of if you're religious or not, because religious people cite this shit all the time too, like they think they know how to. Uh, everyone I think agrees you should know logical fallacies. But did anybody learn logical fallacies before college? Had anyone even really heard that phrase before college? And even then, maybe still not? You did? Well, Forrest, you're special. <laughs> that's, that's just... Anyway, that's, I didn't know nearly as many of them before I took... I took Psych 1 in my, my, yeah. during my first... Uh, during my education degree, I took Psych 1. And like that's where I learned a lot. Of, but I knew what they were. I just didn't know enough about them to like be functional. Yeah, and then somebody had said, uh, every time you watch Seinfeld, Paul Manafort gets commissions because he was a producer or something like that, and that he doesn't actually, they don't actually care whoever said that, but they were just trying to make me feel bad. I am a socialist, sir. Uh, no ethical consumption under capitalism. Just anything you're doing right now, start Googling deep enough. You're all on YouTube. Look, we're ethical mm -hmm. on our side. Do you know who owns right. YouTube? Fucking Alphabet yep. owns YouTube, my friends. You're not ethically consuming right now. Like, Jesus. I, I ate a, I'm yeah. pretty sure I ate a Snickers bar the other day. That's slave chocolate, but That's, I needed lunch. Like, right. fuck, man. <laughs> Thank goodness you it's didn't hard. have M&Ms or, or, or uh, Nick Adams would have lost his shit. Uh, oh my god did you see that yes, video dude yes that's so fucking I'm, funny he's not he's not mad about the candy right. he's not even mad about the cartoon characters based on the right. candy he's right. mad that not enough of the cartoon characters on the package are male right they don't right. have penises but they're male right. identifying cartoon candy and yeah. there's not enough of them on the picture on the package and he's having a fucking sissy fit Which, about it by it's the way, so fucking funny dude it's also very progressive because it means nick adams recognizes that gender gender identity is more than what's in your pants very good on you, Nick. Exactly. What, what do, do the do the fucking chocolates have a Y chromosome, Nick? That's What's right. going on? <laughs> That's right. Uh, Sabiv Golden Calf oh said, God. "God, Mike Jimmy is best, Jimmy." That's really kind. I think so. We did get the fifty dollars <laughs> super chat, and I think that means we should play it now, uh, and, and then we'll hey. read that super chat later. Do you want to? You want to? You want to? Shall we? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Go this for is it. this yeah, is for means. a brand new show that is launching on the line called Cuz I Wanna, and this will be the intro that plays. I'm just saying that that's... And that looked really cool. Thank you. There oh, was no you, sound. You couldn't hear it? Could everyone else hear it? No. Was it only was it only you who couldn't hear it? Because I might have just not been sending it to you, but I think I was sending it to the to hey, live chat. Did you all hear it? I'm gonna play it again either way, because I want I want you to hear it anyway. Um that's probably <laughs> what you were saying. I, I saw you trying to say something, and I was like, Yeah, uh, he doesn't know we can't hear him. And it, what's funny is you were literally trying to say, I can't hear <laughs> I can't hear you. Uh, in fact, I'm also going to change where it automatically pauses the music when we transition back to you. So here we go. Now tell me, give me a thumbs up when this one goes because I won't be able to hear you.
We never really address enough that, no, like, much better. Much better. what business do we have to keep having bangers of music time after time on this channel? I'm just saying. Hey, while, while that was going on, uh, my wife texted me and said the word sissy fit has sexist connotations. And that's, I you know, I never think about that. So, yeah, I'm going I'm to just thought about that. that um, I think hissy fit is probably better, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Sorry for using that language. I didn't think about that. But I guess she just texted me. She's like, what's the connotation of the word sissy? Think about it. It's 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 to be say feminine. So like, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I learned yeah. a thing that I just I never thought about those words. Huh. For the record, for the people who are uh somebody said it's gonna be about what Jimmy wants and only occurs when he wants. I won't be the only host of cause I want it. In fact, I I I'll tell you, one of the first things I'm gonna do most of the time that I want to do a cause I wanna is text for us and just be like, you got anything to do for the next six hours? And, <laughs> and, and like, and other people too, because I want to bring back some of the people that uh, we've got to introduce you to on hostility recently. I want to have Alyssa back really soon because I just feel like Alyssa's voice as a, uh, I mean, she is a skeptic and an atheist, but she doesn't focus on that. As a sex coach who's just good at it from the perspective of just being a sex coach, I felt like, it, it, what's funny is that episode didn't get a ton of views. I'm going to clip it out to make sure that the individual calls get more views. I think it's one of the best episodes we've had, uh, of course, other than the episodes with Forrest, because that's everybody's favorite, and I don't disagree with the mob. Uh, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I thought I you'd like laugh. the person. Not, not, <laughs> at mob. Go ahead. Sorry. I was, I was looking at the, 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 not to stick on this, but I saw somebody in the chat say sissy fit spelled C I S like yeah. sister. That's yeah. great. Those are <laughs> hilarious. If only we could make spelling puns in speech. Fuck. Right. I, I mean, saw one where I was talking about like some, some dude was pissed off that there aren't enough straight white men on TV and everything. And some guy comment is like the heteros are upset rose about it. <laughs> that me. That's I love fucking wordplay, man. This is why, by the way, so I, I want to get you on this team. I think that puns should be called POWs, P O W's. Cause a pun is a play on word and it's right there. It's a pow. You pow people with, I mean, it. I don't dude, get it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> join my join my fascist overthrow of language for this, please. Uh, Game Master Flash <laughs> says, Forrest, it is always a joy to introduce new people to your content. You're a fantastic educator. More role for initiative, please. Jimmy, you never fail to make me laugh. Love both of you. Well, thank you very much. I mean, I appreciate that very much. And I would love to do more role for initiative. Let me actually take a picture of that because... Uh, blah. There we go. I'm going to put that in the group chat of the people that were on Roll for Initiative and tell them that their their efforts are appreciated. We raised like over, uh, uh, I think it was a little over $5,000 for the Human Rights Campaign uh, yeah. by playing Dungeons and Dragons like fucking idiots. So uh, we would love to do that again. I feel Dungeons and Dragons needs to split up this charisma skill and to sound like have charisma needs to be split up because right now it covers so many things. So I can't find, I can't make a character that really resembles me with maxed out charisma but a total inability to make eye contact. I don't I don't I don't see myself in Dungeons and Dragons. Anyway. Well, they don't have like behind the screen microphone talkings in 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 D&D right now. That's the issue. Sure. I endorse if you, if you could fucking if you could put the monster on mute and tell them how dumb they are, you win. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I can I can make eye contact <laughs> through a camera because I can make eye contact with oh, a yeah. camera. That's some uh, easy, easy peasy. Hey, thank you, Borealis <laughs> Phoenix, for becoming uh, a supporter. Oh, by the way, everybody, uh, thank you tonight to Quail Coffee, who was tonight's call screener. And then I want to say yesterday's was. Let me double check it because uh, I forgot to thank them on the Sunday show yesterday. We were in such a rush. Um, I, I want to say it was Alex yesterday, but let me double check. Let me waste more time as I'm the one who's been trying to rush it along uh, and I'm slow at everything. Was it Dragon? maybe? Yeah, Dragon. Dragon was yesterday's call and screener. Thank you, Dragon, for screening the Sunday show. I'm sorry about the, the late shout out. Anyway, he was fuzzy wuzzy says... Four hours or more of Forrest R and Raw and Gut Sick. That's a that's a show that I will prepare for. That's a show that I will have an IV line in and a catheter. <laughs> that's that's 
That's a show that has producer. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Aaron and Aaron and wait, wait, bring bring that one back up. Bring that sure. one back up. Sure. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna send that to Erica and be like, "Yo, <laughs> people want you back on this shit." How long? What did uh, was it? Almost six hours or almost seven hours that the just you and Aaron show went? It was uh, almost. I think it was almost seven. Yeah, and we had to we had to change in the sixth hour. Like, okay. No more five dollar soups. Only tens and ups are going through now because it was getting crazy. Um, anyway, for the record, for people who are, if you, if anybody's not super chatting because they're worried about me going, uh, uh, leaving and needing to leave early, send your super chats. I, I have always said I can be paid to stay. I'm just, we started an hour early so that we could end earlier relative to whatever earlier means. Uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever happens, it's the same length of show, but it ends an hour sooner in the evening. Uh, Jordan says, oh wait, sorry. That made me pass Zoran. Zoran says, Forrest, I know you're an anti-theist for gods that interact with the world, but how do you feel about the kind of God that doesn't, can't interact with the universe at all beyond pressing start? Love your content and the line. They're asking, are you a lazy atheist, AKA deist? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I would say I still have no evidence of this god's existence. Um, and if it was real, then it's just this feckless interloper that just made a thing. And either way, it's just it's not really worth your time, man. Um, if it exists, it exists. Super cool, but we don't have a reason to think so. So, whatever. If if, if that kind of god was brought up, I would just fall back on the argument for there's no reason to believe it. I, I obviously wouldn't say that god is evil, but like useless boring for sure 60 percent of the chat said that david was for real where did you come down on that i i i kind of the so the second question i was going to ask is like david tell me for real and you can and and i know that like you know it's important to stay in character but the the show's over now the call's over was this all a chuckle were you doing this for a chuckle did you think you would help us if you called in and just be an insufferable pedantic and demonstrably stupid theist. Did you think that would make the show better? Uh, but anyway, where do you fall down? It's it's hard because like he didn't say anything that we haven't heard in sincerity before. Sure, you know I mean? but he, but he also, the you're like, right. The the individual things we've heard all of them sincerely, but that many in sequence is pretty rare. <laughs> that's right? that's pretty new. <laughs> Um. Anyway, sorry. I just wanted to know what you thought of that. Jordan says, "How can I right. say?" Oh, wait. Did you give your opinion? No, you did. You said, There's no evidence for it. Uh, yeah, nor is yeah. there even a demonstration that that's possible. Uh, I used to. Did you yeah. ever get down what, with simulation what does outside theory? The universe mean. Right. Did you ever get down with simulation theory? Or are you down with? I it didn't now? like because it it's an un, it's an it's an unfalsifiable claim. That's why I don't really like. It's kind of whatever. Yeah, I so yeah, there's definitely that part of it. Um uh but I so at first when I heard it I was like, "Oh my god, yes. Yeah, right. Of course." But I realized like I had this harsh bias of thinking that those level of simulations will eventually happen. I and and one day I realized, "Wait, I don't fucking know if that's going to ever happen. I don't know that we'll ever be able to simulate universes." Now, I do believe the moment we can simulate full universes, uh, uh, even close to as complex as ours, the 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 the, the simulation theory probability goes up dramatically. But I can't. I, I changed whether I say I believe or even entertain it now to the same as my God position. No one's even proven a God's possible, let alone probable. Did you just walk away? So and my you're like, whole thing. Okay. Well, yeah, I had to grab some papers and a pen. My whole thing is that that like it it you like fucking shit, dude. Like you have. You have universe here, which is able to make simulate. Is that? Can you see that? I have to no, tilt this way. It's you have this universe here. <laughs> is, is it completely gone? Because I can just tilt it this way, and I can see it on my end. I see is that nothing. Good? I'll make it darker. I, I don't see anything, but yeah, okay, that's good. So here you have this universe where yeah. where where a simulation happens, right? And so they make a universe, and here, and then yeah. say this universe gets to the point where a simulation can occur, and right, they now make a unit right and so you kind of have this idea and this is right. something that people talk about is like we either have to be the very first universe or the very last universe in this chain and that's mm -hmm. unlikely right it, right like, except we, that's not we technically know we're not true one of because the well, we know we're not one of the middle ones 
Yeah, because you, we haven't invented a simulation universe yet. We we either, so we either have, to, have to be that one or that one. It, so the only reason why that doesn't work is that presumes that the only species in our universe capable of creating a simulation would be the humans. Because right now, for all we That's know, true. two billion years ago, some aliens in the Andromeda galaxy already did it. Mm. And there have been now simulations right. since then. Yeah, that's the only, the only My fault. big thing is that it makes no sense. My reason that I don't agree with this idea is that it, is, it makes no sense. I think it was actually my wife that was talking about this with me a little while ago. Her idea was it, it makes no sense to say that this universe would only ever make one simulation. They sure. probably made, you know, yeah. here's this one and here's this one. And then they also made their simulations and they made a bunch. Of, so you actually have this insane branching pathway. And now there's like 10 million possibilities well, rather than just but one. But simulation it theory becomes infinite. Simulation to theory technically agrees with your wife. And so basically my, my position yeah. is the moment that we um, actually demonstrate it as possible, then the odds of us being in base reality go down to some astronomical number. However, we haven't right, demonstrated right. it's possible. So we don't even know if there are yeah. odds. Unless you think The Sims 4 is kind of like, yeah, I don't know, when we're just all marble darble for darble marble. <laughs> I mean, what is language anyway? My big thing is that like it's it's like it's one of those things that's unfalsifiable. Even yeah. if you could prove to me that we're not in a simulation, you right. could just say, "Well, that proof is part of the simulation." And right. even if you woke up out of the simulation and proved you were in a simulation, like the Matrix, there's yeah. nothing to stop you saying, "I have now gone to level two of the simulation, right, and right. this is the next one." You know what I mean? Right. So like, yeah. there's the moment... nothing that you can say for or against it that doesn't fall apart when you say. But that's part of the simulation. So it's just a useless argument, you know? And then base reality, if it existed, uh, I, that's the only one I'd be interested in. I'd be like, how yeah. did base reality come to be if every other reality is in some way attached to simulations which branched off of base reality? Like, who cares about the rest? It was... It was just a coagulation of pure probability. Once once the, the possibility of a simulation became a thing, then the reality that started it is the simulation of nothing. It's yeah. just the pure possible of a thing. It's so stupid. I bet somebody would fucking take that woo-woo language and make it a real thing, though. I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of simulation theory is all I'm saying. That's, yeah, that's yeah. my whole point. I See, the reason why I would call myself a fan, not, a, not an adherent, but a fan is that it doesn't break any concept of natural materialism. Like, it's it's people mm. going like, boy, with everything being as vast and, and where I see humanity going, it's almost just optimistic. It's like, it's like saying, I really believe in science and humans' ability to master it. Now, you might be completely yeah. fucking wrong, and we might never be able to simulate complex universes, but... I uh, I like the motivation, but anybody who says we live in a simulation, I would just say prove that that's even possible. Prove that like, and, right. and I would say you're an idiot if you think that you can say I the know one, you do. The one that pisses me off the most is when people are like, "Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson said that we probably live in a simulation." I'm like, I don't fucking care. He right. did if he said that. That's right. not it's not an argument. So, yeah, yeah. So did Elon Musk. I'm. Uh, I'm not getting my, my right, exactly. worldviews yeah. from either of these people. Uh, I didn't fucking like that dude either. Like, yeah. uh, I, no, I like I'm not, Neil I'm not, enough. I'm not saying Neil's a bad guy. It's just like yeah. that's, not a, that's not a fucking thought. You know I, I mean? was just saying, like, if you're going to give a person who, who supported it, then I'll counter it. We had this with somebody yesterday who was like, well, Albert Einstein. I was like, yeah, well, Albert Einstein also didn't believe the black holes existed so and thought that everything would fall mm -hmm. apart if they did. So he's capable of being wrong, yep. you dipshit. But also... I well, the, it was kind of like the call with David. David at the very beginning of the call said, "I feel like what you're saying is wrong," and I believe that that summarized the remainders of his points. That he feels yep. like you're wrong, and it was that sort of yep. thing with the Einstein thing. I feel like Einstein probably, probably only said he believed in Spinoza's God because you know at the time that's what he would have had to. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, back in the 30s and 40s when it was unpopular to be a theist. Oh wait a mm -hmm. second, right? Just fucking idiots. Anyway, sorry. We should I just rebuilt a brain while we were talking. Nice, nice. Uh, Steve Goldencalf says, also, because I just realized it could be taken negatively, the God might comment is saying, I like the pleasant surprise of Jimmy when he's not seen. Uh, um, and so Steve uh, Goldencalf had said at the beginning, 
God, Mike, Jimmy is best Jimmy. And I responded with like, I'm aware that I have a, a, a face for radio. But I was only kidding. I, I wasn't at all offended. But thank you for the very generous that's super always, chat, nonetheless. People sometimes tell me I have a radio voice, and that's always my response. I'm told I have a radio face, too, but I don't know. <laughs> and, like, either it goes dad joke, and people are like, come on. Or they don't understand what that means, and they're like, yeah, you could really do it. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, dude. I, uh, I almost stopped the whole show because in, in the fir- I think it was the first call you were – you were taking a call and somebody said something and you said, mm-hmm. But you said it in a baritone so low, I didn't know my human ears could register it. And I just wanted to like draw <laughs> attention to like, did everyone hear that? Was that the brown noise? Holy fucking shit. Your voice can go low. Mine cannot. You should hear me when I'm like, when I'm a sleepy man and my like my neck's real relaxed and I'm just like waking up in the morning and just grumbling away. Yeah. Oh, can you carry a tune? House. Yeah, I can sing. I'm, I'm a pretty solid tenor, man. We should we got to figure out some sort of obscene science god duet to do one day. That'd be a we lot get of fun. You, me, Matt, and Arden will make a barbershop quartet type situation. Do you know the fact that I don't? I, don't, why I assume Matt can I, sing. I, I don't. I I think by now I would have been. I would have witnessed his ability to sing if he could sing. And I haven't. I so just I, picked the two first people off of this line that I imagine that I sure. could like. Sure. Sure. I do my 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 living room literally right now has a piano, drums, two guitars, and an o- automophone in it. I told you nice. about the automophone. You were sending me a picture of that freaking automophone. Yeah, you it's told so, me about the automophone. It's so stupid. <laughs> you should bring that out every time someone starts making dumbass arguments. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh man, I'm so tempted like, to go grab it. No. Uh, um, I know you're a theist, but you just sound like a grown-up off of Charlie Brown. Jam Nico Six says, "I could rant about that for a very long time. Please rant some more on toxic masculinity and gaming and the studies done." I, I, I think, I think no, though, because it was already a lot of today's show was right. ranting about that. So I think maybe like a minute, not a lot more. Just you want another I, minute? <laughs> I would just, yeah, sure. I'll just, I'll just very quickly say that, like, in my life, I have heard people say that, like, different ways of walking makes you gay, different types of clothes make you gay, different kind of makeups, and, and oh my god, I'm real burpish right now because I've been chugging water this whole time. Uh, different types of, like, nail polish or makeups or, like, uh, uh, playing different video games or whatever like that, and it always comes down to the idea that if you are feminine in any way or homosexual in any way, that means you are lesser than. So I have two, they're the same way like playing with cooking play sets instead of like, you know, army toys or whatever. Um, to which I would say, number one, even if that were true, what would be the fucking problem? It's why it pisses me off when people are all like, you know, oh, you need to get your panties out of a twist when you do. do. I'm like, okay, so your whole insult here is that I'm wearing panties as if I were a girl. So what's so shameful about being a girl that you think that it's an insult, Right. Um, and even if, but yes, even if that were true, what's the actual thing you're saying? And then also, it's not fucking true. Clothes don't have genders. Makeups yeah. don't have genders. Walking doesn't have a gender. Video games don't have genders. It's just a thing you do. If you want to do it, do it. And I can't imagine being such a fucking fragile little snowflake that I think that getting some paint on my fingers and playing a character with boobs is going to erode my masculinity, whatever the fuck masculinity means, to the point where I now am, am, am a, a woman. Like it just it makes no sense to me. I like how I like how before, about this with, I, I like before I say, I, I, somebody even suggested that playing a female character undermines your masculinity. Before that, dudes uh, did it all the time because they wanted to look at in the third person those terrible. That, terrible tits on it on on a uh, uh, fucking polygon yeah tomb regular cans yeah. yeah well that's and that's what what that guy was saying i think it was jace if i remember right that's what he was saying is you know the the the, the straight men in his life are in two camps of either i can't play a female character because i'm not gay or i want to play a female character so at least i'm looking at a girl's butt at which point i'm saying do you remember it's a fucking video it's a, a computer yeah. animation like what's going on here um, but yeah, no, it's just, Oh dude, man, don't take it, that. It, don't it, try and take that away. You know how much I love VR. I'm going to stop even trying to have <laughs> sex with humans. The moment it is remotely satisfying to do it in virtual, in the virtual world. I, <laughs> Jesus. Well, I, I, I love doing save so much time. And money. I, 
Right. What I love doing so much is taking that like su- the super straight kind of like the, the, the super masculine <laughs> shit, just ad nauseum and just having fun with it and be like, yeah, man, that's why I don't fuck women anymore because women <laughs> like dick and that's gay as hell. Yes. I don't do that. I only I only fuck guys. No, I let guys fuck me because they're freaking <laughs> gay fucking a man and coming in a man. I'm just having sex. They're the gay one fucking a dude and like just like just take it as far as I can in this way and just like I, it's I love, so oh, fucking funny every time. I'm a man. I only like masculine things. I like Riding Inside. horses, chewing tobacco, and a big veiny cock. I only blow dudes like bros do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let me give you a bro job. Bro job. <laughs> you know, kid, talking, like the amount of like insanely homoerotic things that people admit to because they're like, yeah, we're just some bros playing ookie cookie. Fucking uh, uh, last one to. Ju- you know what I'm talking oh. about? Like, and there's like, oh, that's just the thing you I do wish- in college. I'm like, bro, that was that was just gay. <laughs> I, ass- I assure all of you, you don't want us to explain what it is. Don't anybody yeah, don't, ask. Don't it would it don't would take up. It would take a five hundred dollar super chat to have Ookie Cookie <laughs> described on this channel. I'm not kidding. That is the threshold. If you want to hear, I literally oh, gagged man. almost threw up when he mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> if I, it would take five hundred dollars mods, don't ban anyone for it, but delete anybody's live chat trying to explain it. <laughs> it will take five hundred dollars for Ookie Cookie to appear on I this sh- show. I just helped my bro. I just Dutch ruddered my bro. Could get him through a hard time. I don't know, man. Oh, I'm literally so queer, funny. and I feel like the Dutch the Dutch rudder has a lot of exceptions. I, the Dutch rudder no is Dutch rudder is pretty straight. Um, it's it's a gay thing that straight <laughs> men do together, but I don't think it undermines their sexuality. It's kind of like uh, I knew these guys, uh, and, and and neither of them were. Look, I, I I'm not willing to just give my queer card to other people just because during their most masturbatory years they were like. Hey, bro, it feels really good when I hump my bed, especially when there's more pressure on top of me. Will you sit on my ass so it can it can feel even better? And the dude's like, yeah, man, but you got to sit on my ass after. Like, I, I, you know, you got to, this is like, this, this is like, this is like the fallacy of every like curious girl with, with her friends too. Like that doesn't make them lesbians just because they're doing a little bit of a gay no. thing. You don't get my queer card so easily. Is all I'm saying. Just like, bro, you know, it's like where I've got nothing to do and I'm out of, you know, I don't want to play Haley. You want to go out in the middle of the woods and dock? I'm like, yeah, bro, it's just fine. <laughs> it's just whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Docking, docking. <laughs> I, I'm not that gay <laughs> i don't duck uh sorry i, I miss jordan jordan says how can i say that i think evolution or other scientific models are accurate to talk about things right them sorry yeah, yeah. about that <laughs> we thought we were just on a phone call late at night as our calls usually go <laughs> uh hey will you hit refresh on your uh connection there it's just chopping a little yeah totally thanks yeah i'll be right, I'll, I'll be right back scuba dooby doo where are you Bring back Forest Valkai. There we go. Uh, Jordan says, how can I say that I think evolution or other scientific models are accurate when I never did any testing by myself? How is pointing to peer review more than an appeal to authority? When was the last time that you went out and tested and proved that the Earth went around the sun? That's what I would ask. Because like that, there's, there's this really famous... like. Um, exchange it's so famous that i forgot the fucking guy in it the the person but it's like this famous logician um and somebody asked him like how like how how they phrased it like why do you think it is that like people used to think that the 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 sun goes around the earth when it's so obvious if you just look at the it looks like the earth is rotating not that the sun's going around the earth and the professor the logician guy said okay what would it look like if the sun was actually going around the earth. And the point was, it would look exactly like this. It it would look the same from our perspective. And so we had to go out and do testing, do experimentation to learn that in fact it is actually the earth that's spinning and not the sun going around us is where we got this heliocentric model. Um, When did you do those experiments? When did you go out and verify that and test it for yourself? Um, So you did mention other scientific models, but like that's one that I guarantee you're probably taking for granted, even though you haven't checked it. Um, Now, as far as being an appeal to authority, the reason why that isn't the case is because, number one, that's not what appeal to authority means. The appeal to authority is one particular... I heard Robert Sapolsky say that, you know, 
and the sun goes around the earth and therefore it does no matter what science says that would be an appeal to authority but even you know to your point which i know what you're trying to ask why aren't you just you're falling in line believing based on faith when you learn science the beautiful thing about it is that you don't just learn what we know you learn why we know it i have proven the speed of light i have proven the force of gravity in physics labs and chemistry labs in college, I've done those things to prove that they're real. We, you have a lab portion of, you know, when I was in a, a physics class, I didn't just learn about momentum. I knocked shit together and calculated how far it moved and how much it weighed, and I calculated it myself. So, like, uh, in, in evolution labs, like, I've, 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 I have done genetic tinkering on bacteria to make them antibiotic resistance. I've calcul- like, counted fucking Drosophila flies under a microscope to see population studies, like... So it's not like I've gone out and verified every single peer-reviewed paper ever. But as far as like the fundamentals of these things, that's part of education. Um, and even if you don't get to do those things, the process of learning how we know what we know means that you're not doing what you're saying here. If you want to talk about how, you know, the atomic theory, the, the, the idea that, you know, matter is made of atoms and that atoms have a nucleus with protons and neutrons and electrons buzzing around the outside, like... You can just say that, or you can go look up the Rutherford experiments, the gold foil experiment, and like how in the cathode and iode or or an anode, where we learned these are what these different parts are made of, and this is how they behave, and this is where they're positioned. And we move from the plum pudding model to the orbital model to the 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 bees around the hive model to the uh, the uh, the, 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 the 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 oh fuck. Um, quantum model to the, like, we move through these things by understanding more and more and experimenting more and more. And it's not just, I heard there's atoms, so I guess there are. So that, that's yeah. why you don't have to go test them all for yourself. It helps them if you do, but like just learning the history of science is a huge part of education that, that I feel like people miss out on and don't I, think about. I actually think the main thing, Jordan, you're probably getting hung up on is a lot of people don't know that a lot of the fallacies are named something that isn't unreasonable and then the word fallacy. So an appeal to an mm. authority isn't always necessarily unreasonable or fallacious. Now, to it becomes fallacious when you say, uh, so for example, one that isn't uh, fallacious, you should get the vaccine because this number of studies from these institutions say uh, these are the results or whatever else and, and, and we trust these institutions. That isn't inherently fallacious. It's to say it's mm. something is true because this authority endorsed it that it that that it is right. that's the reason it is true is becomes it is because it comes from that authority so like we do this with slippery slope the the slippery slope fallacy i talk about slippery slopes the fucking like religious conservatism is a slippery slope to fucking fascism but it comes fallacious yep. when you say it's sort of an inevitability essentially that because uh, I see a connection between weed as a drug and heroin as a drug. Therefore, heroin will or weed will lead to heroin. Uh, I was going to say heroin will lead to weed. That might be true. It but will. Weed, weed, weed will lead to heroin. That's when it becomes a fallacy. And so that's yeah. uh, uh, in your case, when you say how is pointing to peer review more than an appeal to authority, it isn't. But it's not a fallacious appeal yeah. to authority because that is the authority you would appeal to when you're talking right. about a scientific thing. You know, if I was if I was going to talk about medicine, I, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't study. I study biomedical sciences quite a bit in my undergrad, but I'm not here to give medical advice. I would defer to what does yeah. the American Medical Association say? What does the World Health Organization say? Like that's that's not an appeal to authority. These are the experts in that field that know the thing. So like it would then be if I were to say this one doctor said something ridiculous and he's a doctor, so therefore he's right. And he said that fucking you know that 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 spaghettios cure cancer then that would be an appeal to authority fallacy. So like, yeah, just there's, there's a fine line between respecting people's expertise and understanding what they're saying and, and the reason they're saying it versus just believing it because somebody with, with a fancy title said a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, believe me, I'm the executive mm. producer of the line. Uh, <laughs> Nitsa Trap says, I have a dad joke for Forrest. What washes up on really small beaches? Microwaves. That's really good. That's really, really good. I love that. Uh, oh, I don't have... I just took it out of the room. Damn it. I had a stepladder in here, and I was going to hold up and be like, this is my stepladder. I never met my real ladder. Yeah. I like that. Damn There's it. at least one person in the audience who who is at, at minimum one person who thought, is it worth $500 to me 
to hear these two <laughs> explain to everyone else, to hear them traumatize the rest of the, the audience with a, an explanation of what Ookie Cookie is. <laughs> uh, Richard Gitschlag says, I want to see how Forrest, Erica, and Aaron would nerd out as they feed on each other's enthusiasm and exuberance. I'm going to send that one to her as well so that she knows that people be asking. Because she had a lot of fun. I want to like just let her know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I keep meaning to... I want to get her like a, a gift for coming on because that was a very successful show. We should we should do something nice. Uh, J- the Justin says, do you agree that selfishness can lead to altruism? Uh, sure. Um, if you selfishly want the recognition and the praise for being altruistic, then it could cause you to be an altruistic person in order to get that benefit. Um, Wouldn't maybe, that make sure, it not if- altruistic? Well, there's also, there's the concept of reciprocal altruism as well, which is tit for tat. I'm going to help you se- yeah. seemingly selflessly so that eventually you will come along and help me as well. Um, that you could potentially say that. And then at the end of the day, you're going to get down to like really deep semantics of like, well, what is it? Is altruism necessarily uh, non-reciprocal? Is there a, a reasonable expectation of not being praised and blah, blah, blah. But like, We'd, yeah, yeah. You, yeah you we have to define our terms. Altruism if you tried. Because I actually think that even, like most definitions of altruism includes the phrase selfless, and so it would be yeah. pretty hard to do a selfless, selfish action. <laughs> so, like that's yeah. that's pretty tough. Um, sure. I like that. I like the word selfish. If you ever think about it, you're like, eh, I am myself, ish. I don't know. I like it. Mm-hmm. It's got that. It's got that nice ish quality. Mystic Mind Analysis says somebody. Uh, somebody in the chat said, "I wonder if this person is a fan of Ayn Rand." And that's exact. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's why freaking <laughs> like objectivism is hot trash. One of the many reasons why Ayn Rand's objectivism is awful. Yeah, she sucks. I had an old boss that was also Mormon that was like t- really trying to get me to read some Ayn Rand. Um. Anyway. Uh. Shit, I lost my place. Uh, Mystic Mind is that one? Yeah, Mystic Mind Analysis. I don't think religion is inherently evil. Rather, it's a social contrast used to justify existing moral biases. Uh, existing moral biases aren't inherently evil, but religion literally is a quality of worship, has the quality of worship yeah. in it, which may be inherently evil. I don't know. adds the problem. That's it. Like, you know, the religion as a concept could mean anything. You could, you could apply any belief system any dogma any morals or whatever but like the, the 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 definition of religion is you know this following of these certain tenets and these these uh, un, unquestioningly doing these things yeah i would say that's inherently a problem you need to you need to make sure that you're thinking about those things even good things you should be able to question and think about i I'm not anti-fascist because it's cool. I have good reasons. I've thought about it, and I've decided on these things. You know what I mean? Right. Right. It's one of those things where it has multiple definitions, and so when it suits a person, they switch to the one they want. But obviously, when we're having religious discussions on this channel, we're talking about the less, uh, uh, the, I guess, the more traditional system of worshiping a superhuman entity. Like, that's... That's mm. the one we're talking about, not the one that is basically a colloquial version of moral system or whatever. Yeah. It's, this is where pedantry comes in, and I just get so fucking annoyed. John Morissette, are you related to Alanis, says, Good show. Always stumped on how there could be so many Bibles, more than eight KJVs alone. I would think a god would tolerate only one. Of course, all are right. He didn't even bother to write one. Why the fuck would he care? <laughs> <laughs> you don't give a shit. That is funny when people when people are like, you know, oh, it's it's the 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 you know the this is the one truth. This is infallible. This is you know everything you need to know here in this version. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Um, boy, I feel like so many people are just gonna take away from this episode yours and my very heated debate. About booty, 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 <laughs> rocking everywhere. Gary Booker says... I, I still think you're wrong. I, I just I don't know how. Gary Booker says, I agree. Listeners really should follow Gutsick Gibbon. Erica is super smart. We love Erica around here. We love She's Erica, awesome. don't we? We love her. Some people call her Gutsick Gibbon. But we just... We, we love Erica, don't we? Uh, She's really cool. I'm sorry, Erica, for 
abusing you with Trump voice. Send. So I'm looking at uh, something else over here. Like, she's awesome, and I'm hoping to be able to do some sort of a cool collaborative video. I don't want to put her on the spot, but literally today we were talking about doing one soon. So like, don't hold your breath because who knows when it'll happen. But it is possibly in the cards for soonly. Someone asked if I was saying that worshiping their girlfriend's feet is evil. Yeah. Feet are gross. <laughs> Disgusting. Don't kink shame. Well, what about the gross weird ones? Don't kink shame. <laughs> anyway. What about the gross weird ones? <laughs> I think that's the point. Sen Thordika says, Ducking hell, Forrest, I was eating. Why you got to ruin strawberries? I could have done it with anything. That's just my go-to. I don't know why. It's just my easiest like one that I do all the time. Talk about strawberries and gross people out. So part of my um, part of my training as a professional photographer before YouTube, I did like a lot of uh, classes and learning up, up on color theory. And anytime people mm -hmm. bring up strawberries, I literally just think of the top of so many studies and articles and things about perception of color is a blue strawberry. You see it somewhere either at the top or within the yes, article and everything. I know and exactly this, what you're talking about. Yep. This whole concept that now not only we've we have graduated from we can't pl prove that your um your experience of red might be my experience of blue. Uh we've moved mm. from that to actually that's probably the case. We probably all experience different. The probably some of you see red as my blue, but because of things that are hardwired in my in our brains, uh, and the things we still relate to where my red I associate with like anger or people say hunger that has to do with natural mm. things that we evolved to that that are like other things so blue being a calming color has to do with the fact that the sky is blue so even if you're experiencing my red is your blue you still have the same associations belt to the anyway it's a, it's a terribly interesting topic uh, and it's cool that you we probably don't see have the same experience of colors I think that that's cool i mean uh by the way somebody in the uh, in the chat uh they said that strawberries aren't true berries and even though they didn't pay for super chat i'm gonna call them out and be like yeah you're absolutely right strawberries are not berries also strawberries like as a whole aren't actually a fruit a, a strawberry is several dozen fruits it's it's an aggregate fruit so like if you eat one strawberry you've actually eaten like a bunch of fruits all at the same time Yes. Do, you, do we ever talk about that? About how fruits are classified? I do don't you know. Wanna? It's, Not really. It's cool. <laughs> Not really. I'm, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting pretty tired at this point. It's send more money and we'll do the show longer. If anybody asks sure. by Super so, Chat how are fruits classified, let's do it. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, somebody ask me in Super Chat why jalapenos are technically berries. We'll go yeah. into that. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. Travis Croy says, Hey, Forrest, braiding sweet grass is on my wish list, as is The Greatest Show by Dawkins. I remember you recommended Evolution of the Rainbow or something like that. Help, I need that book. Uh, so there's Evolution's Rainbow, which is all about the, the biology of, of sex, gender, sexuality, things like that. It's pretty tight. Um, and then there's also Unweaving the Rainbow, which is not in here. It's in the other room. Um, but Unweaving the Rainbow is a, a book by, I think, Dawkins about, like, scientific discovery and things like that. So those are both pretty cool books. I would check out both of those if I was you. Hell yeah. Sorry, someone's asking me a tech question. Okay. Uh, on to the next. Blah. Excuse me. David Dorienzo says, be honest, when Bob Ross says, God bless, at the end of the joy of painting, even as an atheist, you're like, I'll allow it. No, I Well, that's no. the thing. The, the Disappoints reason, me. The reason why it's okay when Bob Ross says, God bless, is because Bob Ross is God. You, what no, you're seeing see. there is actually how he made every. He's just, he did that, and it was so beautiful, and that was the world we live in. I, he, I, I feel like that is a guy who was just a big fan of performing fellatio, and that's what he was talking about every time he said, Happy Little Bush. <laughs> uh, just really excited for another Happy Little I'm gonna Bush. I'm going to add my smile to your bush. And that's be happy right. Happy Little Bush. <laughs> and this is just going to be our little secret. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I'll that fucking got creepy. Cut you. <laughs> 
Uh, I I feel sad when people that I respect express their feelings in God, like beliefs in God. I just feel bummed out that somebody else that I think is pretty dope got scammed. <laughs> Did someone say, don't ask Jimmy Tech questions? Ask Forrest. I dare you. I fucking yeah, dare please, you. Please, please ask me a tech question. See how far it gets you. <laughs> Uh, i i am uh i am forest is as good as tech good with tech as he is bad at biology and that is to say he's very good at biology (laughs) just just, like if you can try to remember how many times have i asked you what iso means on my camera yeah that's true we have to five ten somewhere in there i'm literally i'm literally was doing today this morning, I was watching a YouTube video about what ISO means. I'm it's, fucking sitting there in my studio, fucking with it. I'm literally sending Forrest a camera know. so that I can, so that he has a camera that I have a replica of the camera in front of me, and I can, I can <laughs> run through the settings with him. So when I call you at 2 a.m., like, yeah. hey, I don't know what, like, what yeah. does F mean? <laughs> I can pull up my reference thing. Oh, if you call me at 2 a.m. asking what F means, you better be ready, child. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. So let's not skip Faye here. The insular cortex links moral disgust. High disgust mm-hmm. seems tied to high in-group, out-group thinking. Is that in the insular cortex another structure? Also, Jimmy is a hamster and smells of elderberries. I'm not familiar with the oh, elderberries damn. part of this, but uh, it is supposed to be that I am as tall as a hamster. Uh, people have guessed that that is my height, which is fun. Uh, but yeah, it's it's the your 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 mother was a hamster and your father smells of elderberries from from Monty Python. So you got both. Oh, I yeah, see. Both the, the parental slurs. Um, so uh, in-group, out-group thinking has more to do with, uh, and this is a little bit outside of my wheelhouse, so if somebody's more familiar with neuroscience, correct me, but in-group, out-group thinking has more to do with things like oxytocin as a, as a neurotransmitter. Um, so like you can see really cool studies where like uh, oxytocin really enhances like love and bonding, but it also really enhances like racism and shit because that's what it's really good at. It's this, it's this, this neurotransmitter that controls like you are in my tribe, you are not in my tribe. Um, And there's a lot, a lot to say about that, but I would summarize it by simply saying that the cool thing about all of it is that you have the power to choose who is in your in group and out group. And if you think about somebody as your family and you expose yourself to that kind of person regularly it actually does fundamentally change the way your brain works and it makes you a more compassionate empathetic less xenophobic less racist person so you should do that you should expose yourself to other ideas and other people as much as possible is really good for your brain fuck yeah i literally started writing a text because i was like i got time and you finished before me uh, I was trying to hurry. I'm trying to go. No, no, no. Quickly. You're good. You're good. Hey, people, send in your super chats. We are. Uh, we've only got uh, forty left. No, it's not really forty. It's it's. We've got less than a page of on my system. Uh, Liz Chris, good old Liz Chris, says because Forrest and Jimmy are the best. Thank you, Liz. Why? Chris. Thank you. I might have appeared on screen for this part, except for that I look as tired as I probably sound to everybody. Uh, James Call says spicy Forrest. Hell yeah. I liked it. I liked it too. <laughs> there were there were definitely things where I, I very much appreciate as I listen to you and I listen to Matt's and I listen to Shannon. We all have our different ways that we handle calls. Um and and mine are the best. And then everyone else sucks. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I actually like listening to yours because because you'll go down pathways that I wouldn't. But then I also know what the answers are going to be because I've done these calls a million times on my pathways. So it actually is more interesting listening to your calls, even as I'm champing at the bit and going like, but ask yeah. what religion he is, please. Like, like that, uh, That's exactly how I used to feel. I used to listen to like atheist experience and whatnot and just like have it in my ear. And I'd be like, you try, you could have asked him this and he wouldn't yeah. have had anything. And that's when I knew I wanted to do this for a living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's this is the good shit, man. I'm also I like that's I'm I'm a lot nicer. I try to be a lot nicer than a lot of the the other like we hosts and whatnot, which is fine. Like it, you know, Matt ha- is famous for hanging up on people and screaming over people and all these things. But like, also number one, that's his style. He likes it, and also he's been doing this shit for like almost you know what is now four hundred years, and so like he's gonna be like he's heard the same shit eight million times. Yeah. I would also be frustrated, Matt's- and so like I try to try to you know attract more flies with honey but then also like 
not give this god any leeway. I don't know. I I'll, I'll tell you what, though. I, I think people miss something because they associate something with something else. I am definitely more impatient and shut down people faster than Matt does. And it, but Matt oh, is do. more Matt's more audibly. You can hear Matt's frustration more than with me because I'm a fucking robot. Yeah. Uh, and like, that's literally, that's literally the difference. I'm, I'm like, uh, first of all, I'm a bigger asshole than Matt, but I'm not as, I'm not, yeah, I, he audibly sounds mad, more mad probably. Uh, but, but I feel like the, the level to which I have, the effort I've put into being very creative with my insults as I tell people to go fuck themselves is far worse <laughs> than any of the shit Matt's doing. And yet Matt gets all the shit. For it. Also, I, I will say one thing too, which is that uh, uh, I, Matt, man, Matt's been doing it for a long time. Matt has seen when like things looked like they were getting better and then they got worse. And then Matt is also basically married to a trans woman in Texas. I'd be pretty fucking yeah. pissed off when I'm dealing with Christians too. <laughs> like if I, if I had all of that as well and, and, and I am pissed There's off. It. I just express it differently. Uh, this is like a recent topic. Cause people like come to me, like get your boy in check. I'm like, I don't even get myself in check. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you go get yourself in check, go make your own call and show and do it better right. than us. That's literally it. Like the moment you do it better, I proved this true. If you can do a call and show better than an existing call and show, the audience will come to you. You know how I know? Cause I fucking did it. And I'm not going to say That's which what? call and show I've beaten, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. I fucking made the better call and show network and it reflects that. It's it's crazy because like that that is like I I always try to be smiley and nice and like let people like kind of talk a little bit more. But like honestly, my my goal is always to like give them all the rope that they need to hang themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to straw man them. I want to make sure I always steel man their points. I want to make sure I'm always accurately just like what they're saying. I'm repeating it. Make sure that we're on the same page here's why you're fucking crazy. And, and it's not just that I misheard you or whatever. Like, make sure you have all the time. Somebody even in the chat when I was talking to, um, I think it was Andrew, whoever was talking about morality. No, it was the, the last call. It was Dave. And I was saying, is everything in the Bible good? Is everything, you know, is, did God ever have a bad commandment? All that? And somebody in the chat was even like, bait that trap for us. Because like, you can see where I'm going yeah. with it. I'm yeah. making sure they have all the time they need to like, back themselves into a corner and then sure enough at the end of the call he's like you're trying to back me into a corner i'm repeating what you said like that's yeah it's, it's yeah. just very different styles that's one of the things i like about this network is like you don't have two hosts that are the same person you know yeah yeah i right sorry my sometimes i think in metaphors or not quite metaphors but as much as like tv sketches and shows and i feel like the the position Matt's in again. I'm very raw about this because it was literally something people were being dicks to me about yesterday. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I imagine just like a, just a some sort of sketch that reflects the world literally being completely on fire. Uh, and somebody walks up to Matt and he'll, hands him like a garden hose and is like, "We expect you to take care of this our way." You're like, shut the fuck up with your garden hose. Get the fuck out of here. Oh. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm slightly delusional cause I think I'm up to 30. What am I at? Like 36 hours, no sleep, 35, I'm somewhere crazy. <laughs> um, my body sucks, but ba, 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 ba. praise be, this is Harry chair stepper. Harry chair stepper says praise to be to disembodied Lord Jimmy and King forest. <sighs> so I'm a knight and he's my king. <laughs> I'm the executive Very producer. <laughs> Make me emperor or something. <laughs> Produce uh, these nuts into your mouth, give, Jimmy. <laughs> give me just give me something that makes me feel better. I don't need to like actually feel in charge of him. I just need to feel like no one's in charge of me. That's what I need. <laughs> Literally, that's the theme of my life. Anyway, wish I could watch your By whole. By the stream. way, you, you said. Oh, so I'm sorry. I, j I just want to point out while you were reading that and, and talking about how much you need validation because I'm your king. I was uh, looking up very quickly uh, this this network and another notable network that makes similar content. Um, and yesterday uh, you did a show, We Don't Believe in God, Call Us, you, you and Matt on the Sunday show. It was streamed one day ago. It has 25,000 views and a different uh 
far more established <laughs> show on a larger platform with many more subscribers, also streamed a show one day ago uh, that has 21,000 views. Ooh, just saying. Oh, we're neck and neck right now. The live, the live wasn't even close, though. Anyway, uh, not did, that I'm tracking. It has 300,000 more subscribers than you have, That's and true. you have 4,000 more views. Which, it's it's multiple things. I genuinely don't <clears throat> resent that network, this, but, but it, like I, I love a lot of the people there. It, there's nothing... Obviously, there were issues that have happened, and that's independent of how I feel about the organization in general, and in a bit independent of all the people who are there who I adore. I, I genuinely uh, yeah. I love these people we're alluding to, for the record. Uh, but... Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I still want to be the best, uh, like no one ever was, uh, to pass them is my real test, uh, oh, yeah. to shit. I can't think of a good word to replace train them is my cause. I will travel all across them. the, yeah, that's sure. Eh, eh, not that as much, but anyway, um, uh, th but I will say like, it's both a nice thing to look at those numbers and go, fuck. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we bring no, to the that, table. That's... But then also makes me sad. <laughs> hit the fucking subscribe button. If you're listening right now and you haven't hit subscribe button, it means nothing to you. If you hit it and you don't <laughs> keep watching the, the algorithm will forget you hit it. It genuinely does not give a fuck. It means nothing to you. It means everything to me hit the fucking subscribe button for the for me and everyone on this goddamn show once we hit a hundred thousand subscribers we literally unlock new features and access to youtube and shit like like you actually by growing also get more priority when things go we we get demonetized all the time we could have that turned around quicker uh, uh, and lose less money if we had more subscribers. It means it's nothing true. to you. It means everything to me. Please hit that fucking subscribe button. Jesus Christ! It is crazy. I when I after I broke a hundred thousand on my channel, like it it is nuts. Like it's it's so much more stable, and I'm able yeah. to kind of like predict my metrics a little bit better. It's it's just it's yeah. really nice. I just double checked while you were say, uh, yelling. I checked, and I am I am subscribed both on my. On Boris Valkai, my actual YouTube channel, and on my personal channel that I use on my phone, just the the the, the account that doesn't have any videos that I just watch videos on. That I've subscribed on both. So there you go. You're so yeah. welcome. Oh, uh, yeah. And I I also I would also second what you said a minute ago because I don't want to come across as mocking uh, uh, the ACA or anything like that. Um, we never said their awesome name. People, they, <laughs> I just, fuck it. Um, <laughs> we love them. They are really genuinely nice people, and they've been nothing but nice to me. Uh, mm. And I, I, I like them very much, and they're really, really, and I still, I do at least one show a month for free. That's the difference. It's the, like, here, yeah. I'm able to, you know, I'm making some money, and I'm able to, like, build a little bit more of a career this way and, like, kind of yeah. do something. That place is awesome, and I believe in their mission, and I will donate my time when I can. Um, but it is also really cool when, like you said, we're putting some extra some skin into this game, you especially, and it's yeah. cool to see that pay dividends. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like by I the way, I, I spend way, way, way more time on this channel than I do on that channel because I'm able to build something out of it. I only want to compete with my friends anyway. Like, for the record, I wouldn't have even brought them up if I didn't think that, uh, like, they would take it well and in stride. Competing with your friends, having a friendly rivalry makes both of you better. It's why Starbucks always goes across the street from another coffee shop and both of them get more business. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is the greatest Colin show channel. Actually, God, I wish that was true. If I could Okay, this is the greatest atheist, skeptic-themed Colin show channel in the in the world uh now i'm aware that if we just want to go with colin shows it's hard to beat james o'brien on lbc but that's in the uk that that's not even that a real good. place that's pretty much fucking narnia <laughs> like shout okay. out to james o'brien jesus christ the, the, if i i i am not good with flying especially internationally over the ocean and yet if i got the invite to that show I don't know what I do. Just put me in a coma until I wake up over there. Cause fuck yeah, man, I'd be there somehow. Um, anyway, uh, isn't LBC like, the isn't network. it a conservative network over there? There's, there's a health, there's a, 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 a Overall, heavy mix. Yeah. We, it is a right, just right of center. Right. But not and everybody like, is right me. of center because James right, O'Brien right, well, that, is that's what, not. Uh, and then Katie, yeah, Katie well, Montgomery was just on a show there too. 
Oh, is she really? Good for her. Yeah. Uh, that's what gets me is that like I've listened to a lot of LBC stuff and like it's so fucking left wing for America because yeah. we are like. Hard, like the most left wing people, the the crazy socialists in our yeah. good are like that far left of center, if just not just fucking center. And yeah. like it's it's like Biden is right wing as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah for sure. Oh yeah, I just, yeah. I, it kills yeah. me. Like listening to all these people from all over the world, and they're like, yeah, we're kind of right of center, and it's like you sound like communists in America. Yeah, I, it's funny because. Uh, it's pretty awkward the number of times that this sort of like, who's your favorite call-in host or that style of thing has come in and I'm sitting next to Matt and I'm like, so here's the thing. Matt's great, <laughs> but James O'Brien's on a different fucking level. You want to talk about like what Dude's you were fantastic. saying, like ha help the person hang themselves. That is that yeah. guy's like art. He does that's it as an art Absolutely. Form. Yeah. That's why I love him so much. He's the uh, best. That's, yeah. He's the best. I hope he. I hope he gets smarter on some issues. He's 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 definitely not as bad as a lot of people are on trans issues. He's sort of got that like line of like I don't understand it. I find a lot of it weird, but I also respect people's freedom, and I wouldn't enforce anything against them. Uh, is sort of his, and that's like the one spot where I'm like, man, it just sounds like you're avoiding googling questions. <laughs> like, fuck, guy. Anyway. Uh, Kevin T says, is there a set of baseline psychologies, pathologies among humans? Uh, I don't know. It's, I, I know what you're asking. And like, genuinely, that would be a question for some, like for student, Shannon. Dr. Ben, he would be able to answer that way better. Shannon, probably too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Shannon, cause Shannon's, like I can say like, I was going to say Shannon's back sorry, on the 30th. Shannon will be here the last cool. Monday of the month, if if for the psychology question, student Dr. Ben, I think, is next week on Thursday, not this week. This week's episode of Tactics yeah. will be on Saturday. Yeah, I, I think, like, they're, they're for sure, like, we can say for sure, like, you know, these things are healthy behaviors and healthy, uh, 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 you know, ways of being alive. Like, like we can do that. Um, but as far as, like, a template, like a standard model of those things, besides, like, heart is beating yeah. and liver is fucking, you know, like, I don't know if there's actually like a, a rap sheet, you know what I mean? That people go yeah. through, but like, yeah, like we, we know what functioning organs look like and we know what a functioning mind looks like. Um, right. I just don't know if there's like a set of baseline things that I could, I, I guess like, I'm sorry. I, I know I'm rambling a little it bit, but like for sure. Like we, I know too with pathologies, for example, yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah. So like when I was taking pathophys um, in, in my undergrad, I took a class in pathophysiology and like that was the main thing was, okay, so you have a patient with a blood pressure of this and a, a, a heartbeat of that. What's going on right away? Okay, well, they're bradycardic and they're, 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 their blood pressure is high. So you just know that. And like, so yeah, we have a baseline of like your heart rate should be about this unless this situation or that situation or this situation, blah, blah, blah. And we know your blood pressure should be about this except for when these things are happening and when this, you know what I mean? And if you, 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 you drop blood pressure here and you're, you're, uh, Oh fuck. Get student Dr. Ben on here and confirm this one. Your <laughs> so wait, renal wait, wait, you angiotensial saying? endosterone system, angiotensin, tension, endosterone, your RAS, RAS system does that. And then this picks up over here and like, this, like that's, so yes, there are baselines, but like, I don't know, like if there's like just a set template, this is health. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know if that's a thing. In summary, Forrest is saying, paging Dr. Benus, Dr. Benus, <laughs> paging Dr. Bean. I hope Ben watches. Ben, I don't even know where it came <laughs> from, but I have, uh, I, Ben one day referred to himself as Dr. Benus, and I feel that I've solidified it as a meme for him. Anyway. Great. Captain Red Long Bull. Long story short, yes, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Right. Captain Red Bull says, got it. And that was back when we asked for $50 to show the theme song, which I feel like uh, Warren's playing it again. Oh, it's down low, though, this time. Hang on, let me pull it back up. Boom! Y'all like how the sound is synced? Uh. More importantly, because I wanna. Yeah. Boom. so good it's so good i know i really hope the rest of the show lives up to the amount of work i put into just the intro <laughs> like i hope i hope, it, I hope the show doesn't suck <laughs> right uh, 
Anyway, I like that. I'm gonna music. get with you. I want to. There's a a new series I wanted to make on my channel, and I want an intro like that. So I'm gonna get with you about that later. Oh on. yeah, man. Fuck Remind yeah. me. Remind you know, me. I've got a really cool idea that I don't want to give away, but I've got a really cool idea for something I want to do. I, by the way, I didn't, I didn't give up. On, I won't give away anything, but I didn't give up on the exercise of trying to name it. I just everything I come up with is a series already. I'm not even kidding. Like it's, six, it's cool. You, six so you, times. you remember what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one you're saying? Yeah. Did you come up with a name? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I, I came up with a batch of them and I sent them to the people and they're going to talk about them. And if okay. it doesn't happen, I'm doing it myself. And then you check to make sure they weren't already series, right? Because literally I had like six that were. Okay. I didn't check. I just sent you them. Should check. <laughs> you should check. What if it's the same six? <laughs> well, they're, they're <laughs> pitching. They're pitching them to other. That's Dude, their job. To figure what, that out. One day I had this idea for a series and I was like, we're going to do this and this and this. And then I'm going to call it. Check this out. Jimmy on the street. And they're like, Dude, not only is there already a series called Billy on the street. You're also just pitching Billy on the street. Your idea for right. the series is, and I was like, oh yeah, I've seen that show. It's so hard oh, fuck. in modern times to not accidentally steal yeah. other people's shit. So now I do it on purpose. Everything's been done. Yeah. Everything's been done before. It's so hard. Yeah. Now I just, now I just steal on purpose. Anyway, <laughs> this is, and this is not an ACA production. Stop mistaking it. What are you right. doing? The, the beautiful thing about that story, I was going to tell it earlier when that came up, uh, the ACA, when I first was launching the line, I called the ACA and I was like, hey, guys, uh, I kind of want to do my own call-in show. You have your thing, but it's Austin exclusive. I want to do what you're doing, but I want to do it remotely. I want to be able to have hosts from all over the wor world or country or whatever. And they were like, that's awesome, man. And I was like, yeah, I'm just trying to solve a couple of tech issues. And they were like, cool, here's everything. And they just sent me Every diagram of all of their tech setups, how their audio stuff literally gave me everything. And then the pandemic nice. hit and they needed to do my model, which is different than their model uh, because of the pandemic. And so I literally gave it back. I gave them back everything. And now we're basically doing the same show because we're basically on the same model because they never went back to Austin exclusive like they were pre pandemic. And so it's, it's, uh, it's fun because I stole and then I shared I'm like fucking yeah. Robin Hood. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Uh, <laughs> that's how I'm going to sell it to myself. Anyway, Larry Fishman says, why do you live in Oklahoma? Isn't science illegal there? Because I was born here and I grew up real poor and I'm only now at a point in my life my career is going well enough where I can think about moving and uh, we are thinking about moving. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, it all depends on... I'm finishing my master's right now, and I don't know if I'm going to do a second master's or if I want to start a PhD. Um, and then depending on which one of those I choose, you know, it depends on if I get accepted with whatever. Um, we're looking at moving to a couple of different places, which have really cool graduate schools that I want to attend as well. Also, I might just end up finishing, you know, just focusing on my work some more, but I would really like to, you know, go back and do a little bit more. Uh, I know Amber's watching this right now, and I know she's heard me have this conversation uh, every single day for the past probably year. Um, so she's you know, sick of it. Um, but like, yeah, the, just, I, I know I want to continue learning stuff. I just really, 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 really don't like academia. And I like doing this. Um, I just want to know more things and that's, that's the biggest issue, but there's, there's some really cool show, uh, cool, uh, uh, programs around where I live and also in other places where I want to live. And I don't know which one I'm going to do, but yeah, Amber. fuck Oklahoma is the whole thing. Amber, please bring your husband to Austin and I can offer you uh, a queer best friend who will make you unlimited charcuterie boards. You're going to have so many charcuterie boards. You just seem like someone who probably likes about, charcuterie. Are you talking about meat and cheese or like actually yeah. you're going to woodwork us boards? Woodwork you boards. Okay, but you're not going to put <laughs> meat and cheese on. No, I'm not. I want to presume to know which meats and cheeses you like. I like two cheeses, <laughs> mozzarella and cheddar. I don't like cheese. And you much. picked the worst ones? <laughs> <laughs> I've had this conversation too many times. Okay, look. Have you tried butter case? It's amazing. It's For the, the heart of Havarti. Havarti with I, dill, I, I, and you eat it with, with some nice <laughs> sweet apples. Havarti and dill yeah. or butter case with like ambrosia <laughs> apples, and you just live your happy life. And you don't need goddamn cheddar and mozzarella, you animal. 
I went to a cafe the other day and they had like a, oh, we're, we're pretty much famous for our ham and brie croissant sandwich. And I was like, okay, I'll do the ham and brie croissant sandwich. And that's when I learned that brie cheese tastes like chlorinated pool water. It's fucking disgusting. Like, you know, brie's awful. It's yeah, brie's so terrible. gross. Every time I try yeah. a cheese and someone's like, oh, okay, but you haven't tried a real cheese. I'm like, look, guys, I, yes, I, I do also like some fake cheeses. American cheese, not craft singles but from the deli a good white american cheese a good hard-working white american cheese it sounds <laughs> racist suddenly <laughs> i love i love a good <laughs> american cheese i like i like cheddars i like mozzarellas i like you know i like provolone oh my god i like provolone oh my god uh i like on in a very specific on with specific combinations like melted swiss cheese is pretty okay uh what are your thoughts on gouda i don't recall liking Bills, it dense smoky dry yeah no yeah I'm not, that was something sweet and i know and what you're talking about it's real good i'm not yeah, yeah. I, I don't for example i love making charcuterie boards I'm not a fan of most of the shit that I remember one time we went to the super pretentious place called the farmhouse in Denver. I actually loved the restaurant otherwise. Cause they had this amazing blackberry barbecue sauce that they did a pulled pork sandwich on. That was fucking amazing. But, uh, they, the, the appetizer was this charcuterie plate of like jams and crackers and cheeses. And it was all like fancy goat cheeses, which just tastes yeah, like yeah. it tastes what I imagine. Like, ball sweat tastes like i'm not licking up a lot of ball That's sweat but... See, goat goat milk and goat cheese tastes like goat smell it's it's awful it's it's, yeah. it's so bad it's yeah, uh, yeah i don't get it yeah but oh. it's, 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 so by the way uh amber's in the chat and she said that i'm more of the cheese person than she is but then she also said she'll consider it yeah okay austin's amazing See, though you, austin really is great you had me you had like at the first half because you were saying like if she brings you down you'll make us unlimited charcuterie boards and i was like fuck i'll bring us down if that's yeah. what's happening but <laughs> then if it's just the fucking wood i don't want it i want I, if, you, if you were offering me unlimited cheese i'd be there tomorrow i'd pack yeah. my shit right now like, uh, it's, it's, no. i i was always gonna invite amber you're just amber's husband to me uh <laughs> truth that's fair that's Flip fair the script Flip she's the, script. the smart one in the relationship she's <laughs> I missed Harry Chairstepper, who apparently said, or I apparently missed one of Harry Chairsteppers. Must be so easy to argue as a theist. It's like trying to play pretend superheroes with a grade schooler. Then theist acts superior, LMAO. I love my favorite. Okay, what's your favorite thing that happens in response to actually successfully backing a theist into a corner? Where you're just like, oh, of course that's what you did. What's your favorite way they react? Right. Uh, usually we, we saw it today. Well, it's a different context. You don't understand mm -hmm. God. It's, it's different than what you think you're applying your morals to this. And then, yeah, yeah, that's, it's I'm, just that you're too stupidness to, you're too stupid to figure out how this actually works. I'm and projecting I have special the ignorance. secret knowledge that you don't get. You gotta yeah, let exactly. someone projecting the ignorance knowledge that you don't understand. Right. For sure. Mine's hot. Mine's solipsism. What you think I could be wrong? Well, might the whole universe exist at the end of my penis? Can you prove it does not? The whole universe might not exist because you said I could be wrong about some pretty basic human psychology bullshit, and I fell for his pyramid scheme. So prove that I'm you aren't uh, living on a universe at the tip of a follicle in my butthole. That's 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 one hundred percent. That is the entire argument of that to the Psy Ten guy. Yes. Just like, well, how do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know? I unless you would accept that there is a God, then you can't know anything is real, and the entire universe might not exist unless there's a. You're borrowing from my worldview. Right. Like it's so insanely right. stupid and lazy. And I just love the, uh, that's so easily, like, okay, well, what if you're a brain in a vat that was programmed to believe that you could know anything, but you can't? Like, the fucking, yeah, What, what if you're works. a brain in a vat that was programmed to believe in God? Yeah. What about that? <laughs> Where are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I So I saw, I think it was Eric Hovind was trying to debate with an atheist, and he does this very stupid fucking arrogant thing where he asked the atheist, 
could you be wrong about everything? And the guy goes, yes. And he goes, the debate is now over because if he could be wrong about everything. And I always, I've always wanted to be in that position because I wouldn't just yes or no it. I would, I would be that douchebag who was like, I believe. And then I'd pause. So it makes everybody lean in and you, and you talk a little bit quieter. And now you're, you're given the opportunity to finish a whole sentence. Uh, it's a, it's an old argument technique, but anyway, you go, I believe, and you pause and you go, that it is possible that I could be wrong about everything, but I also believe that it is probable that you are. And that's how I would drop my mic. Fuck you, Eric Hovind. You suck at this. You suck at it. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Uh, furs on gaming singyas. Sing singyas? You mentioned your favorite dino was Therizan Benzabatis. My friends, and I there call it... Therizanosaurus. That's, found what, it I, out. It's there is that's what I said. Gosh. Uh, my friends and I call it the Tickle Chicken. Do you agree with this name? <laughs> Lo love that. I <laughs> that's I, so good. I want to use Tickle Chicken in a different context. I can't give it to a dinosaur. <laughs> Hey girl. Hey girl, you want to come play some tickle chicken? <laughs> Who's going to oh. stop first? Who's going to stop first? Do you know what I have found works as a line? It's funny because we brought it up. If ever I want to start a conversation with somebody on like a dating app, like Tinder or something, and we've matched, in the past I've had lots of lines that did not work at all. It would be like, hey, how's your Friday? And they're just like, well, you are bad at small talk, so never will I respond to you. Do you know what has a 100% response success rate? Hmm. Do you like charcuterie boards? I'm not even fucking kidding, Forrest. 100% success rate. If you just ask someone yeah. whether they, and imagine who I'm talking to. It's all women or queers. It's all women or queer men. So, of course, they like charcuterie boards. Look, <laughs> I'm not trying to appeal to the stereotype. It's just so true. Oh man! Uh, fucking my favorite one was somebody. Somebody said like, uh, she always asks men, "What's your most controversial opinion?" or something like that. And it's just the best way to weed them out because if their most controversial opinion is like human rights should be you know universal and like yeah that is unfortunately controversial let's talk about it let's 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 go out to dinner but a lot of times it's like i'm not into the whole chivalry thing <laughs> i just i don't get why women can have jobs that's i guess that's pretty controversial and it's like all right thank you so much goodbye goodbye yeah I, i'll tell you i've been turning down people for the most arbitrary things too lately i'm like i'm not if you in any way suggest that like you think a relationship is a competition, like it's a fight of some kind, if you oh, if no. you reference no. if you reference being handled in your bio, if you can't handle such and such, such and such, I'm like, I don't want to handle you. Yeah, not, that I'm, tells me you have some the, the, all that tells me is you've had significant problems with the same thing and you're more yeah. interested in being tolerated than growing as a person, and that's yeah, yeah. No, 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 not into that. Yeah. Mm. I and those are the awkward ones where you just want to be like, "Hey, I would say I just want to be friends, but I don't even want to be friends." <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, somebody just, like that sucks, yeah. Just leave my life, please. <laughs> yeah. I oh, oh, no thank you. I love there's a uh a, a thing on I think it's on Twitter. It's called like incel pickup lines and a, oh, most yeah. of it is like Awful. Like people on Tinder or whatever, like sending like a first message and just like, fuck you, you ugly whore. Why don't you love me? And she's like, I just said hello. And I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. The fuck? Yeah. The, so uh, I love how many of them start with, hello, m'lady. M'lady has become oh, a red yeah. flag. That's, that's, some, that's some diabolical yeah. shit at this and point. What's, what sucks is I actually do refer to Amber as my lady. Like sure. not my lady, but like I, when I'm talking, I'm like, hey, my lady and I are going out and do it. Like that's how I refer. I've for ten years I've referred to her as my lady. Who mm -hmm. I she that's how I I don't address her as my lady. I refer to her as that, and so yeah. it's kind of that weird line where I know I'm cringy and weird, but also that's the most respectful way I can talk about somebody. Sure. I love, you know what I mean? Like I don't know. I mean, I'm actually my, be gesturing this way. She's I believe. That way. Couples are allowed to use these terms once they've visited a Ren Fair together. Then it's fine, but not before. Right, right. Like, like you got to put on a fucking weird 
thing that you think is historical, is, but is just modern German beer fest style clothes. What is the most pr- probably cringeworthy, but but definitely like old fashioned, like very like uh, 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 I don't even know if traditional or old fashioned is right. Just like a a thing that you do that <coughs> definitely in dating that like you have to adhere to this line, this this rule that is probably a little bit too like chivalrous or ridiculous i i, I only ask because like i have a lot of those and i, I want to know if anybody else give me, has yeah like give that. me an example because i don't know if i i don't know if without an example i understand I, what realm you're in i always amber and i were talking about this the other day i always ask permission for a first kiss i always ask politely well, that's i would just, like to kiss you on the first yeah, time that's just consent man like that's that's just it's polite yeah it's literally like that's uh, yeah on the first time look if I don't know. I guess I've probably had some unspoken first kisses, but it's one of those things where you're like, you go in for a way too long intimate hug and then you don't totally separate and you look at each other and you move a little and then they move a little and then you move a little and then they move a little. And like, there's like five or six move a littles before you kiss. Now this is usually with women. Gay men just kiss me and it annoys the fuck out of me. I wish they would ask. Come on, dudes. I am in, but let me say yes. But I'm also like, (laughs) I think I'm just a visibly horny person. So nobody was worried. I was going to say no, I don't know anyway. uh, uh, But, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a whole, I, I I definitely would say clear consent has always been gathered. uh, But there's nothing hotter than enthusiastic consent for sure. But like, that's like, that's, that's always been a thing. Just, I, I, I think it's, it's inappropriate. It's in improper. To yeah. to assume on the first day. after that you know have fun read signals whatever but I think yeah. it's a really it's it's a very gentlemanly thing to do and it's something I've always adhered to and I think that's probably something that people would you know kind of cringe at today but like I yeah. don't know I like it I think it was I thought it was nice I can't read fucking people's faces almost at all I'm I'm really bad at knowing what a person is thinking based on what they're doing with their face there's some things that are obvious everybody over the head like if you've ever seen a movie but I've literally said times before I'm like hey I feel like you're either giving me the signal that you would like me to kiss you or that you're holding in a burp and I don't know which one it is <laughs> So if it's a burp, where are we just, going from here? If it's a burp, just go ahead and burp. If it's a kiss, don't burp. <laughs> just get it out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's, anyway, uh, uh, I just, I just make please things. Please don't do both. That's the whole thing. <laughs> oh, I, you know what though? I would fall in love with somebody who had that kind of confidence. If somebody literally was like, as a silly he he, burped in our first kiss. That's the most memorable first kiss of my life now. Right? Like it's <laughs> the kiss is what I will remember, not the event. Cause that's what most people remember about a first kiss. Like if I were to tell you about, I had a very memorable first kiss years ago and it was on Christmas Eve and me and this person, we ran into uh, a, a homeless person and it was like at two in the morning and he was just chilling at the top of this, this parking garage. And we just kicked up a conversation with him because we didn't want the night to end. We were so enjoying this first date. And then the guy was like, Oh, did you, you know, I used to be a pastor and the guy was a bit high or something, but we still had a good time with him. We were just chatting and he's like, I used to be a pastor. And I was like, Oh my God, that's so funny because we're about to like, we're just spending the night here and then we're headed up to, to Montana or something like that to get married. Uh, we're getting married to her. Yeah. And she went with it. And I was instantly like, oh, she knows to start lying with me immediately. And so we're like making up this whole persona. And then the guy offers to marry us before the wedding. So we literally had our first kiss on Christmas Eve amongst the beautiful Denver lights as we were pronounced man and wife by a random hobo right. named Paul. And Paul, Paul that's is crazy. my dude. And that's a great story. But I don't remember the kiss. I remember the environment. I remember the story. Right. Had right. that person. Uh, and- burped i'd remember the kiss <laughs> amber just put in the chat you asked and my answer wasn't yes though which is true uh <laughs> i asked her i was we, we we were you know I, I wanted to kiss her and i said hey i i would very much like to kiss you now would that be all right with you and she said what if it's horrible what if we can't look at each other anymore after it and i thought about it for a second i was like I'm willing to take that chance. And yeah. then we kiss. That was how our oh, first kiss happened. Oh, fuck. That's so cute. We're giving away such we, good stories We reasoned for free. our way through it. 
That's so good, though. I, uh, you two are too fucking cute. It literally makes me throw up. Oh, um, <laughs> I, I, in jealousy. I. This is the fucking crazy thing about being thirty-two. All the people who I like the most, that I'm getting to know the most, and stuff. Uh, I, I shouldn't say all. Not everybody does, but but a lot of you all like have something really great in your lives that is like mm-hmm. making you the better person. That I that. I know is a part of why I like you so much. Like, I just have a feeling that you'd more annoy me if you were the non ambered version of Forrest, if that makes sense. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Me before I met her was a dick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that and seems true. I'm I, not saying I didn't do some personal growth too, but like she was like definitely formative in making me who I am today. Yeah, yeah. And you can kind of tell where people are like, God damn it, you're such a nice, good, happy, well put together person and i can hear in your voice that you're in a wholesome relationship and fuck you for that i'm so alone i'm just so <laughs> alone anyway um, <laughs> lewis <laughs> lewis bond says for jimmy's sex life i am oversharing because i am overtired and I, I i'm realizing this is the type of thing where when i finally get some sleep i'm gonna like fucking i'm gonna wake up and be like what have i done I did all of that. I said all of that for free. What have I done? <laughs> I'll really focus on the for free part. Anyway, um, <laughs> Louis Bonge says, because I can correct Forrest on something, hissy fit is sexist too. Love your work and yeah. the content. Jimmy's voiceovers are great, but his other hosts look better. <laughs> Thanks. Dude. I was thinking about that. Because definitely sissy fit probably has sex, like for for the you know feminist uh, it's it's a feminized thing so it's, but also hissy I uh, probably comes from hysteria which is yeah. hyster- hysterical as you is it but or is it or is it like hissing like a snake I don't That's know man but say. like can we, I gotta can... find a way to say like throwing a temper tantrum but like definitely more childish is there a way to say that like right well and tantrums even going to have issues because they're going to be people who are like ah it's a a scooch ableist but i'm also not one to actually care that much about a lot there are a lot of these words where it's like let's be real careful about the severe ones but if everybody has to think about whether hissy fit is sexist or not maybe we let it the fuck go i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm being too sleepy I wanted to call it because like I wanted to make sure to say publicly like hey I didn't think about that word and now I have and like I yeah it, but like because that's I think it's important that people do that um, sure but it's it's a difference between like you know if if you know I don't know I I can think of a million examples of 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 words that have gone out of style because we realize that they had a connotation that we didn't really want to keep using you know what I mean yeah. I don't have a problem with that it's just the the you then have to put in the hard work of finding a substitute. Which, you know, what a problem to have. You know, who fucking cares? It's, 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 that's, it, it, by comparison, that's great. Um, but then also, you have to do the whole push of, like, getting other people to agree to the substitute. You may have to explain why you're using that substitute. It, it's like a whole thing. Like, it's, there's a million things there. I don't know. It's, it's a long process. I can say I'll probably not use that word again to be safe. Yeah. And we'll figure it out. You know if, I, I mean? if I ever get a cat, I would like to reserve to be able to accuse it, to to accuse the cat of having a hissy fit when it hisses at me. If it is actually hissing, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. well, and that's when I hear the word hissy fit, that's what I think about. It's like like yeah. cats, but also the whole cats hissing is also a sexist dog whistle. So like you know, oh. it's like ah, uh, stuff. You fucking humans with your social rules, be a robot. Anyway, Borealis Phoenix says every added universe would take more computing power over the whole if there are multiple sims in on universe in one universe and those have multiple it gets crazy all that running in the first universe it's saying saying well Borealis Phoenix uh you have not thought about procedurally generated simulations the only things that our universe needs to have computed if it is a simulation is everything that's observed. Nothing actually has to be computed mm-hmm. until the moment of observation. Ah, did you think about procedural generation? Anyway, that's just one thought. I'm not actually really trying to talk down to anyone. Again, I just feel silly because I'm very, very tired. I've been very sick and I have not there, slept since yesterday morning. There was a a, a whole thing... Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember what it was. The 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 there was a, a a channel on TikTok for a while that was going around like saying like is is this racist? And they would go and like 
talk to an Asian person and they say, would you, would you ever use this phrase? And it's some innocuous thing. Like, you know, the, 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 a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush or some, some random idiom that everybody uses. Um, and they were like, of course, yeah. And they were like, okay, here's the specifically anti-racist history, anti-Asian racist history behind that exact term. And they're yeah. like, fuck. And then they go it. to some black person and be like, hey, would you use this word? Yeah, and, like, here's it. And, it, and it was a joke. Like, it wasn't trying to like out people as being hypocrites. It was funny that they, like, just what, what they were, oh, fuck, I didn't realize this was a racist term. Um, and that, that what killed me <laughs> about it is that there's so goddamn many of them. There's... So, like, most of the just phrases that we use yeah. almost inevitably have some sort of horrible fucking history behind them. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to say which right one now. it was, but I had an ex who um, just straight up didn't know that she was using a word to describe a physical characteristic. And the way the physical, the word is, is basically taking what is a racial slur not the one that everyone's going to think of mm -hmm. immediately when I say it. It's not that one, but, and just adding the letter Y to the end. And she just had no idea that that was what, and I was like, even you, you didn't put that together. Like, think about what physical characteristic you're describing right now. Uh, and, and it was just this funny, like, like you don't know until you know, unfortunately. And, and it, it, she just had not put it together at all. And as soon as she, she took it and tried, I wasn't, and I wasn't a dick about it. She was literally like, Oh my God, I'll, I'll never say that again. Um, this, yeah. this is the one, uh, that I was thinking of when I was saying that story, and I was trying to remember it. Uh, would you ever use the phrase just even in jest hip, hip hooray as a congratulatory cheer? No, but I understand that people do. And I, I wasn't taking a stand against it. I just don't say stupid yeah. cl cliches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hip, hip hooray is actually uh, derived from an anti-Semitic chant, a uh, uh. rallying cry to attack and round up Jewish people. Uh, huh. and then there's a well, that blows. eeny, meeny, miny, mo, eeny, meeny, oh, yeah, miny, that... mo, capture tiger by this stuff. Right. It wasn't yeah. tiger back didn't, in the day. Didn't use to have tiger. Yeah. <laughs> didn't. Yeah. Uh, oh, long time no see. If I, if you were to not just see imagine, for one, you're like, oh man, long time the, no see. But just imagine the person, wait, sorry. The, imagine the person that, that was like, okay, listen, we have this eeny, meeny, miny, mo song. And we all agree it's amazing, <laughs> but we got to modernize it. We got to get rid of the N word. It's really important we hold on to the song. So, what do we do here? I just. Long time no see is a, a, a way, was originally a way of mocking Native Americans attempting to speak a pigeon form of English and, and speaking a broken English. So, that's a, a racist term. Okay, um, the phrase, the, the, the word moron. Moron. Mm. That word was originally coined by a eugenicist to describe people who were too stupid to be allowed to live and breed. So, like, it just, it, man, it's yeah. so hard. That's it's so hard being a person on the internet to not get something right. fucked up. You know what I mean? That that stuff's complex too. And honestly, I'm sitting here going, like, guys, we might be within a decade of a violent but somewhat cold civil war. I don't know that these are like, let's, <laughs> let's definitely have conversations about these, but this is where like half of the online conflicts are happening. Meaning you do not recognize this. This has come up a bunch of times where I've talked about I'm autistic. You would have called what I had 10 years ago, Asperger's. And then people are like, why would you even bring that up? That is coined after a Nazi eugenicist who blah, 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 blah. And there's fights and arguments back and forth on it. And I'm literally sitting there going like, so who are you going to go tell that? All these people who actually were given that as a diagnosis and literally have the condition where rules get hard set in their brain. And so they're literally like the rule here is that you have a thing called Asperger's. And now you're being told that you're some kind of asshole because you've been using this thing that's significant to your identity. And that's where I go, like, maybe yep. fuck off with that shit. Like, I'm, I'm. Well, that's, that's why, like. I, I have an issue with like when so like I I was talking about autism once in a video and like there's active debate within the autistic community as yeah. to whether say an autistic person or a person with autism. I have friends right. with autism who are on both sides of that debate. So like that's yeah. a thing that we can like defer to them with. Yeah. But the also I, we 
we don't have to have a debate over whether Autism Speaks is a shitty ass organization trying to Dude, cure autism. This like, is one that's of, this, a problem, right? This is one of those segments, though, where I get really pissed off and then people are like, well, Jimmy, you're wrong and controversial. But like the correlation between those arguments coming up and people d representing autism as some sort of super infantilized mm. disability. And like, yes. you're not even allowed to say without getting in trouble. Some of those fuckers on TikTok are faking it because I don't have autism because I rub up against plushies. That is not, that's not what makes a person autistic. Are there autistic people who rub up against plushies? Fine. Yes, that happens. This fucking shit is annoying the fuck out of me because it's making it look like there's some metaphor between, or some, some, uh, uh, uh that's in some way being autistic means that you revert into basically acting like a toddler over certain things. And yeah. that is not what autism is. And you all can fucking miss me with that fucking ridiculous shit. Like, oh, it pisses me the fuck off. And so this is another thing where I'm like, yeah, I would be fine if that argument wasn't also filled with the same people who are misrepresenting autism and making people think that autistic people are just people who can't grow the fuck up. Uh, right. Fuck you. Fuck you and fuck you. Uh, is basically where I'm at with it, I'm and I'm, I'm I'm tired of not sharing that. I, I, I've 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 been becoming more unleashed in the last like few months, where I'm just like fuck you in your fucking faces if you want to pull this goddamn stupid uh, shit. We're gonna get fucking murdered. Everybody, everybody should go to TikTok and follow generic art dad Chris Gad uh, at is is his handle is at generic art dad. Um, this dude's awesome. You can't see shit, but like this dude's awesome. And he, he talks about autism in really fucking cool ways, as well as other like things in mental health. And like, uh, yeah, I've yet to see a video of his that I didn't fucking love. Maybe he has one out there. I don't know. But like uh, everything you just said, um, he hasn't like said it that fervently, but like yeah. definitely like, why is it always that they have like an instructional booklet of how an holistic person can handle their autistic husband and not the other way around. Why is it like yeah. you're the fucking problem that people have to deal with and not oh, yeah. just like, here's other rules that people can sometimes live by and stop making up what stimming is this whole fucking trend of like, oh. this is, this is my cute stim. Here's the cute stim. I do stimming for a lot of autistic people is extremely painful. And I'm not saying that there aren't people who have stims that probably look kind of cute. I just have a lot of doubts about the people who are showing them off on TikTok. When I stim, I hyperextend and overflex all of the muscles in my arms. It has damaged my arms before because I was having a meltdown or something. Like, fuck you. Fuck all of you who are trying to make it look like we're cutesy little kids wanting to rub up against our blankie. If that's your thing, maybe keep it to your fucking self. Like, at this point, it's so infantilized autism across social media that it's becoming impossible to be taken seriously the moment you mention you have this goddamn thing. And it was scary to even get diagnosed with it, which I only got my diagnosis a couple of years ago, to get diagnosed with it because you're associated Associating it with what you know society is ready to associate it with you. And by the way, this is not the delirious unreleased thing. I've been ranting like this for a lot lately. I just haven't been doing it on air. So this is, if anything is delirious, it's whether or not I care that I'm on air saying this shit out loud. But it, uh, no one can see me. For all anyone knows, this is just Forrest throwing his voice. For Forrest, you ableist yeah. fuck. Anyway. I, I'm also a ventriloquist, by the way. <laughs> it's... Oh my god. I'm, I'm an ableist ventriloquist. What is that? <laughs> I just <laughs> I Jimmy never existed. Can you prove it? Have you ever seen Jimmy and Forrest in the same room no. at the same time? <laughs> There's another person on TikTok people should look for is a uh, Dr. Ina. Uh she's a um a a, a PhD uh psycho a psychologist and that's like so many of her videos are like yeah. stitching somewhere. It's like, hey, did you know that if you do this and this, you probably have autism? And it's like, is it 10 signs you definitely have ADHD? Do you like peanuts? And it's yeah. like, it's just that kind right. of shit. Fuck and like, you! And she just, Fuck you! Yeah, and she'll just pick those up. And she's like, hey, by the way, this is fucking bullshit. 
and this video yeah. has 10 million views and 5 million likes and everybody in the comments is like, oh my god, I just learned that I'm bipolar because sometimes I leave the light on in the bathroom. Yeah. And it's like, no, oh that's my not god. how anything works. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, and this is the reason why I used to be pro, not quite saying pro full-on self-diagnosis, but going like, look, if you hit enough things and you've done actual qualified assessments and you don't have the resources to go and get help, start doing the work workbooks there are literally autism sure. workbooks like you can you yeah. can you can access resources for free and now it's so convoluted and diluted that i'm like yo for sure like if you think you got it and you see things you want to work on work on them because worst case scenario you're just working on your character but also <laughs> don't start assuming you have it until somebody qual it's it's unethical for therapists to uh, diagnose themselves lay people simply can't do it, it, it it's and so it's right it's Fucking. Well, that's the thing. like I went through like there's the the ADHD awareness society of whatever I don't remember what it's called but like they have like a a, a rap sheet online where it's like you know do you strongly agree strongly disagree and everything in between with like these following statements and if you agree or more agree up to strongly agree with more than like five of them then you are likely you have ADHD and yeah. I strongly agree with like ninety nine percent of the thing and like. And I have friends who are diagnosed that are like, you definitely have. The, but I've never been to an actual therapist who has said, this is what's going on. So I don't publicly say, yeah. I feel this way. I have these things, whatever like that. Because here's I don't the, fucking know. But here's the fucking funny thing shit. about that. Like, like I, I, I've gotten that too, where people are like, are you sure you don't also have ADHD? And I'm like, no, I just have autism, buddy. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a ton of crossover. And they're like, yeah, but... It's so much crossover, it's conspicuous. I was like, right, except for that I specifically don't have an attention deficit. That's why right. I don't have ADHD. And I've even had a person respond to that, be like, well, that's kind of ableist to say, like, everyone with ADHD has an attention deficit. And you're like, oh, so what does the AD is stand it? for? What the fuck? Yeah, like, very, what? What? <laughs> how, how is that? How is, how is that not the minimum requirement? It's like... Uh, fuck <laughs> it's ableist to say everyone see, who has chicken even... pox has a chicken pox virus in them <laughs> the fuck are you talking about it's very weird because like I, a friend of mine is, is a uh, she's a mental health educator and she has like two master's degrees studying this stuff and she talks about like how to handle adhd in this situation and what adhd might cause you in these and like and it's amazingly enlightening. Like you, her name is Katie Osaurus, by the way follow her as well um and it's amazingly enlightening where she's like yeah hey by the way uh, if you have ADHD, you may have noticed these things in your life, and that might have been really frustrating. Here's actually why. And I can't tell you how many of her videos have been like, fuck, and there's a reason? I still don't know if I have ADHD, but I know for sure that, like, the things she describes, yeah. like, more than coincidence, like, she's reading off a fucking book out of my brain, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. so, like, things like that are super helpful, and it's super important that people get to hear that and understand that, so that maybe it helps them go down the road of diagnosis and like right. learn about themselves. It always bothers me, though, when it becomes like a fad. Like I remember when I was in school, yeah, I, in sure. high school, anytime anybody wanted an excuse to be an asshole, they could just say, well, I'm bipolar. And yeah, it's well, like, no. Right now, it's Tourette's. You're an asshole. It, if you have legitimately yeah, have oh Tourette's God. right now, I am so sorry about what 15-year-olds are the making Tourette's look like people. on TikTok. Yes. Fucking Christ. The amount of people that have been fucking called out on TikTok for faking Tourette's just so that they can scream shit in a grocery store. And it's like, dude, you can ha you it's can choose even, oh, to I wish that was the worst that of it. Yeah. I wish that was the worst of it. What's uh, what's I find more fucking like cuz I get the the desire to scream penis in a grocery store uh and you just being a you sort of chaotic little asshole. Sure. But what I find much more disturbing are the people who are like, I have Tourette's because now if I do a video called making pancakes, but with Tourette's, I will get a lot of views. That is some devious And all I have to do is shit. throw an egg in the air and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit, man. I'm so sorry. Yeah, if I, if I if, make if a there, big mess. If there's backlash and I pulled you into this, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't think we've said anything particularly on tour. It just it's it, the yeah. fact of the matter is you shouldn't fake mental illnesses and you shouldn't pretend like you have them because you want to feel cool. Go yeah. to a damn person and get die. The same reason it's not cool to fake cancer to get attention. It's yeah. a shit thing to do. If you have cancer, go to a doctor and address it and figure like. But and then also it would be a shitty thing for me to infantilize your cancer. 
yes. people with, with, with who are neurodivergent exist. They've existed the whole time, and we should treat them like grown-ups. Yeah, that shouldn't because, be controversial. Definitely. <laughs> because not only should you treat us like grown-ups, like you should treat us like grown-ups because that's the minimum to treat people like equals. Yeah. And that's like us being nice yeah. to you because we're definitely better than you. So like treat us like <laughs> at least equals because we're actually your superiors. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about justified backlash, by the way. I'm talking about the, the <laughs> same 15-year-olds from TikTok forming a whole ass Discord about it or something. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. For sure. <laughs> anyway, Johnny Rapine says, we got to close this out. I'm going to... I'm gonna I'm gonna get two unleashed, and we're the le we're currently reading a super chat from an hour ago. Johnny Rapine says, "Forrest, can you oh please God. point out the right basal basal ganglia on your model brain? That's where I had a diet hemorrhagic stroke five years ago." Holy you know? shit! I hope you're okay. Um, so here's the brain. We dissect that sagittal cut down here, and this is the right side. And here's the basal ganglia is right there in this middle section in here. We'll turn that properly. Is this guy up here? Your limbic system, your basal ganglia. I am, it's reflected in the camera. I'm trying to figure out how to move. Is that right? There we go. So you got your, 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 your caudate nucleus in there, and you got your, your, your globus pallidus in there, and you got your putamen in there, and you got your substantia nigra, which I think is actually down here, if I remember right, in the more like the brainstem area. But that, that's where that business is. Um, and the basal ganglia and the limbic system um, are the most fascinating parts of my neuroscience class that I remember the least about. <laughs> but there, it's crazy because like the whole business with like the limbic system and the basal ganglia is like you have like for example the the um, the uh, 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 amygdala, and you ask anybody like what is the amygdala, and they're like oh that's where you have fear, and it's like sure. There's 80 other things that are very interesting and like mainly yeah. like a lot more contextual than that. And so like, and that's how it is a lot of the time with the basal ganglia is like, it's, it's not just this, do that. It's this like pathway and it's really cool. But again, I am not a neuroscientist. I took some neuroscience classes and I studied some of this stuff for my undergrad and some biomed and stuff, but it is not my specialty. And I'm really careful when talking about it because I don't want to say something that's going to cause somebody to make bad decisions about their health. Yeah, Shannon's got a pretty comprehensive understanding of the brain. I, I wouldn't be surprised, Johnny, if you asked Shannon a similar question just about mm -hmm. less maybe anatomy, but more about the, the whole. Oh, well, I, Shannon will know the anatomy too. I, but I mean, if you had a, a deeper question, I bet Shannon would be able to hit that real good. Uh, Steven mm -hmm. says, how do the gu guevdose... <laughs> guevdose. Guevdose of Los Salinas. I like that you went Salinas. to of instead of de for <laughs> Las Salinas and other countries fit into the concept of gender and sex if it does? That's a great question for the of Thursday show, but go ahead. Yeah, of would actually be appropriate because we're not... The, 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 the Giva Doce is, is just what they are and then we're saying where they live. So the, the Giva Doce are, for those who don't know, um, they're, they're a, a group of people in the Dominican Republic who have a very rare intersect condition uh, where they are all born phenotypically female um, they, they're all born female, but some of them are actually genotypically male. And so around age 12, when they hit puberty, some of them just who are like, who are actually male, some of them grow a penis at puberty. So the word Giva Doce actually is a play on words. It means penis at 12. Um, and so this uh, these are people who are all born female, and then some of them right in the middle of the, the you know, the, when they're adolescents, Grow, you, know, you don't know what's going to When you hit puberty, sometimes you get a deeper voice. Sometimes you get acne. Sometimes you get a penis. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, and so as far as where this fits in the concept of gender and sex, um, gender would be irrelevant here because it would still be a cultural context of the way that they're raised in their society. As far as sex is concerned, um, it depends on what you're using to define sex. If you're doing strictly chromosomal, then you can put them as, as males. If you're going, you know, like assigned at birth, it's going to be different. If you go, uh, 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 hormonal, it's going to be different. If you go, uh, gamete size, you know, if they're infertile, where are you going to fucking put them on that thing? And this is a really important thing to remember is that there are lots of ways that we define sex. The most common is gamete size, but that's not the only way. And not a single way that we define sex has only two exclusive options. So like it just, they fit somewhere in that fuzzy gradient between the bimodal lumps. Um, and and that's that's all I would have for that particular thing. I, I like your explanation of sometimes you get a penis. Years ago, I was, uh, I did an episode about stuff and I, I was like, uh, 
And then there's the SRY gene, which essentially its whole job is like, do you get a dick or nah? And somebody literally took that seriously as like, that is not the only thing the SRY gene does. I hope nobody has like a biology test tomorrow because you just made them fail. And I'm like, you thought my right. use of anything that ended with or nah was meant to intercept a person's <laughs> education on genetics in a right. classroom setting? The fuck? Well, and that's another thing. I had a conversation about this recently. Is you know, like De La Chapelle syndrome is where you have someone with XX allosomes and the SRY gene can translocate over there. So they have XX allosomes, but they still are phenotypically male. But yeah. also, that's not the only way that, S, uh, that De La Chapelle syndrome can work. You can have an epistatic event where you don't have the SRY gene translocate, but because another gene, like NR0B1, for example, doesn't activate properly. So then on chromosome 13, I think it's SOX9 that causes you know the, the development of like testes and whatnot, you can still have somebody yeah. with XX allosomes and no SRY gene that still is phenotypically male with a penis and, 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 and testes and all these things. So like, dude, it just there's not a single part of it that's just, it's either this or that. Not a single part of it. And ambiguous genitalia is more common than IQs over 140. Like, it, it, it's, it's like, yeah, it pisses know, me off when people say that this stuff is strictly, you're either this thing or this thing, when it, it, it can very clearly be this, like, weird fucking fuzzy gray area. Just because we have two categories doesn't mean those categories are real. We right. just named shit. If, the, if nature doesn't fit the names that we made, that's not nature's problem. That's our problem. I uh, I only learned this week. I probably learned it in the past, but it's one of those things that if I did, I'd lost it. But I used to be obsessed with like the science of, of sex and genitals and everything. In fact, I, I think I've told you my original career path was to become a gynecologist. But anyway, I only learned this mm -hmm. week. Why about like why we have that seam looking thing on our scrotums? Uh, uh, why oh, yeah, it yeah. looks like there's a seam up our balls, and that and that scrotums are in fact made of pussy those lips. Are your labia that connected together, yeah. The, those are your the, labia that connected together, and then your ovaries distended into there. Right. Every and and also that within the scrotum are two separate sacs. It is impossible for you to twist your. You're, you can twist your testicles, but only individually. You you can get testicular torsion. Uh, you can't like you can't you can't tangle them up. Uh, and at some point, I I had missed that. I'm sure I had to pass a test with that information at some point. Evident, but yeah. Anyway, uh, every every man who fancies himself an alpha male uh, has balls made of pussy lips. Anyway, do you? Do you remember the name of the muscle that lifts or lowers the testes in response to temperature? Uh, wait, I think I do. No, I lost it. I once knew. It's called Cremaster. Okay, the Cream Master. And I, that's exactly, yep, I remember it because it's the master of the creme. The creme. It's lifting your creme up and down. <laughs> I also uh, I was shocked when I was consulting for my own vasectomy, which I haven't done yet, but it's still on. It's still in the plans. I, I had a point where I was going to do it, and then I was going to be moving, and I wasn't going to be able to heavy lift, and that just wasn't an option. But um, anyway, uh, I was surprised to find out uh, basically how blue balls actually works, and that it has far more to do with our our brain telling blood to pull in the area, and whether or not it remembers to yeah. take it away. Uh, before it adds more yeah. and has it's nothing not like to do with a backup of sperm. sperm sitting here. Right. Yeah, Be no. Because most of the sperm that you're ejaculating, the, the next like 20 of them, your next 20 ejaculations aren't even in your balls at this point. And that's why you have to, you have to, when you, this is, this is from my stand up, but it's like, I found out that when you get a vasectomy, you have to, it, you either have to ejaculate 20 times or wait four weeks, whichever one comes first. So it's about three days for me to hit that 20 times. Uh, and, and anyway, yeah, yeah because uh, uh, you, when they give you the vasectomy, you aren't instantly sterile. There is still semen yeah. waiting in places for you. And up to 20 ejaculations later, which is probably more like 15 and then five safeties, but uh <laughs> you've, yeah, you've uh, you've still got sperm chilling out, and you can get somebody pregnant right after a vasectomy. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a crazy time, man. That's, uh, by the way, uh, fun fact, because I saw a few people laughing at the word cremaster. If you ever see, like, a chrysalis of a butterfly hanging down, there's a little stalk. They're, they have a silk pad, and then there's a little stalk, and then the butterfly hanging in this chrysalis. That little stalk is also called a cremaster. So nice. from now on, for the rest of your life, anytime you see butterflies, you think about balls. It's think about same balls. names. All right, let's try and the, the, it's eight forty. Let's try and wrap this thing up before nine. Twenty minutes. We've got probably ten more if no more come in. But obviously, people send more in if you like. But we've got. Uh, we can do this. Five. We're from, only two hours past when we wanted to be. <laughs> well, but but we're also coming up on the what the regular end time would be if we ever did the show regular. So that's kind of nice. Right. Right. If yeah. there was such a thing as a normal show. Exactly. Taishi Kojima says, always wanted to ask Forrest if he heard of the God gene hypothesis or talk more about how pterodactyls are hippos. I have not heard of the God gene hypothesis. I'm going to look it up now and I promise I will regret it. Uh, uh, God there's a couple gene. of things I feel like it could refer to perhaps that we have a genetic disposition to believe in God that that's been hypothesized. Um, that is exactly what it is. The God yeah. gene hypothesis proposes that human spirituality is influenced by heredity and that a specific gene called vesicular monoamine transporter 2 or VMAT2 predisposes humans towards spiritual or mystical experiences. Ah, that sounds like something that I would have a lot of questions about, but who knows? Yeah. It, I'll look I, into it now. I was going to say, you'll probably end up coming to the conclusion that this sounds perfectly plausible, but they have more to demonstrate before they get there. It, 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 it makes a lot of sense that we are predisposed or that we are, it, that it's a byproduct of our pre genetic predispositions to certain other actions. Like I think Dawkins talks about it a little bit in one of his books that our inherent trust of our parents may, a byproduct of that may be religious thinking because you survive better if you trust your elders. And so we have now a system that people have been able to exploit to sort of establish elders yeah. beyond elders and shit like that. I, I have heard of that kind of thinking. I, I'm not, I get where they're coming from. I'm not super convinced, but like I could, I could, I could hear it. Yeah. Uh, $10 for my killed Earl. All this dirty talk needs its own channel. The line after dark, but call it down the line, the foul line, underline the asinine line. Great show, Forrest. I'll thank Jimmy by not complimenting him. Thank you very much. Uh, I Killed Earl was at a Zoom chat yesterday with all the patrons uh, where I was like, hey, by the way, we're going to do a goodbye where everybody gets to say like a final thought. Please don't make it a compliment about me. And then some people did anyway. And I Killed Earl started telling them to stop. And it was amazing. <laughs> I was like, thank That's you. Excellent. Thank you. I just anyway. found uh, the American Society for Cell Biology has a life sciences education journal with a whole paper here on experimenting with spirituality, analyzing the God gene in a non-majors laboratory course. That sounds fucking cool. I'll read that. It's all just focused on education. So Hell feel yeah. free to look into that if you want. P PMID 18316816. Fuck yeah. Uh, Johnny Rapine says... Jimmy's Gillette, the best a man can get. I don't know if I get it. I bet that was in context to whatever we said 60 minutes ago when Johnny sent that. Um, I'm going to take it for, like, like, if it's Gillette, the best a man can get, he's talking like the white shaving cream, so he's talking about Jimmy's white cream, the best a man can get. We only just started talking about cream, though. Uh, by yeah, the way, like, one of the worst was, things uh, to call cum is Cream. Cream. I, there's an episode of Dave where he's having sex and he like says to his girlfriend, I'm about to cream. And I'm like, how does anybody stay horny in that scenario? I'm going to cream. Here it comes. I'm going to yeah. cream. But uh, definitely anyway. like ba baby gravy is way worse. Of uh, like, a, can you imagine using that in a serious context? While you're did you, fuck? you, you established that you don't watch the game grumps, right? Do you, did you see that? Like, or do you I know. I, at all? I, ever... I have awareness of them. I know who they are. I know what their voices. Did sound you ever like. see that one where they're talking about conclude? Oh, like, baby, I'm going to conclude. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, no. Oh, I, I, con I concluded so hard. No, <laughs> they just like draw the word. The only moments from that I remember are some sort of sexual thing. They would say in Obama voice, like, oh, let me be pre. coming or something. Oh, I'm going to pre. 
Uh, it was a pre. Yeah, I'm gonna pre. I'm gonna fucking pre. I'm gonna pre. I'm gonna pre, dude. And then I remember. Uh, let Those me get this. Guys. Let me get this grape off the ground. Let me get this grape off the. Let me get this grape off the ground. Oh my let me god, get this that was grape. obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Anyway, I killed Earl. I killed Earl. Followed up with another one. End of the line. Edging the line. The pickup line. The parallel line. Hard line. And I'm spent. Forest. You're a peach, Jimmy. All I ask is that you make me a charcuterie board for my efforts. We'll see, uh, but it won't be on YouTube. We would have to put that show on only lines. Uh, nice. Thank you. Uh, Fun on gaming. Singia Singia says, "Worth the money." Glad you liked the name. Thanks for helping me learn on the day today, guys. Dude, you could do a feat only fans and call it towing the line. <laughs> We would make millions. We'd make so the amount of people that have sent me emails asking for pictures of my tootsums. You oh, could man, fucking absolutely. Weird. We could fund this whole operation. <laughs> I uh, I did an OnlyFans for a little while that wasn't nudes. It was um, I was playing the character of of basically like basically people's dads apologizing for being so judgmental about their sexual expressions. So it'd be like, it'd be like, you like come up on me and I'm like drilling something and I see you and I'm like, oh, hey, I just wanted to say like, when I said you look like a whore, you have to understand. I, I didn't mean that. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I just, I've internalized my own sexuality, but you know, that sort of thing. And it's just a long, very wholesome uh, thing. But I stopped because, <laughs> because some, uh, some people said that they were like, hey, so the thing is, is that this is the only sexual, the, the only sex worker safe platform right now. This was before fancy and stuff had come out too. And and it's pretty not cool to us if anybody's not doing sex work on here because eventually if that becomes popular, it'll get overtaken and they'll eject the sex workers like Patreon did. And so I took that. I uh, I, I didn't fully agree with it because I was like, y'all know that like I brought a hundred people who didn't have an OnlyFans account and they stayed and started signing up for other OnlyFans, right? These are people who wouldn't have otherwise, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm not trying to rock any boats. Y'all do what it is. A uh, hundred people is not that many people in the grand scheme of the size of the pad of the platform, and the no more wholesome dad content. It was literally at wholesome dad was my <laughs> was my my handle. Anyway, Chris O'Brien says, as a PhD myself, I agree that academia sucks. Find the passion in the research questions and personal exploration of uh, if you are going to pursue that path. I'm getting worse at reading because That's of my sleepiness. That's kind of where I'm at. Is that like I don't like I I fucking love learning things. It's my favorite thing in the world. But I'm really not a fan of grants and politics and making sure I'm kissing the right person's ass to get in the right lab at the right time to do the blah blah blah. I just want to learn things, dude. And like it really, really, really pisses me off when I have spent more time learning how to be a a, a person at this college than I am learning fucking biology. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That that bothers me. Show. And I don't want to speak too ill, but like I've got, I've got some horror stories from some professors. Um, I am actually, uh, I just recently, I'm not going to say what the class was or anything, but I recently started a class in a, like a methods class and like a particular technology. And the professor uh, said on the first day, I'm not an expert in this field. I've had to use it a few times for work. It's not that hard. And on the second day, someone asked him how to do something with the technology. And he said, I don't know. You can look up a YouTube video about it. And I'm God like, damn. we're paying you tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I would like one. the degree, please. God damn. Let's hit, a, let's hit another uh, refresh. You've got like low frequencies clipping. Uh, and I think that'll, right. that'll take care of it. Um, we that back? We'll back. find out. We'll find out. Uh, James Call said, I had a friend in grad school who was a caretaker for Washoe. He would approach women and speak fluent chimp. Uh, I, th did you see the comment that I posted to Twitter? The person who's like smelling their own farts about how uh, uh, we, we like, it's a long comment basically saying that we're as bad as theists because we respect queer people. Um, 
And, what? and then here, I just found it. They're like, I'm so done with these channels. Atheist experience. Austin has become entirely replaced and dominated by the LGBT, QIA, BT, CR plus community equals so, uh, so no longer representative of atheism. And this channel is not much better. I am not an idiot. You treat people who call in as idiots, yet you frequently present the same fallacious thinking you damn them for and present as though you deem yourselves their intellectual superiors. As an intellectual multi-degreed atheist, I find it embarrassing and distressing. Oh stressing that such channels present themselves as representatives of atheists and i literally just replied tbh you seem like an idiot <laughs> just because i knew that's what's going to drive them the craziest <laughs> I'm just, you, you, they said i'm not an idiot oh, you, you seem like it anyway <laughs> i was proud of it god by the way i, I think tagged the, the, the... you earlier in the week and you never responded <laughs> and i was i was very sad did you yeah, I tagged what you in a it? question about whether or not it's possible humans evolved. Uh, basically, that my sleep being terrible and my brain constantly pushing me into a state where I don't want to even go to sleep until like 4 a.m., whether it's possible that mm. humanity evolved that to have basically people who would watch out for the, for the group at night. There, there are some people who I respect who have mused about the possibility that like, having bad sleeping schedules, even things like ADHD or whatever, were actually like uh, adaptive because they gave us an advantage of like having people who were like all over the place that were able to handle several different problems, who kept us safe as the, you know, the, during the dark or things like that. Um, I have yet to see any actual like evidence for that like any actual like research into that i'm not saying it's not out there it might sure. be and i haven't seen it but like all i just want to know if I've i got heard of that is the same yeah well everything i've heard about that is the same vein as like the stone ape theory where it's mm -hmm. like well maybe they our ancestors experimented with psychedelics and that gave them access to new line of thinking and then the ones that were able to handle that line of thinking actually developed into the kind of cultures and deep thoughts and like bravery and shit that we have today and like yeah, that's really cool. It sounds really interesting. Fucking prove it or like shut yeah. up. Like I, I don't have any way of verifying any of that. Like yeah. endogenous retroviruses sound just as crazy and we have evidence for them. So like, I just, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I have heard people that I look up to talk about it. I've never heard it in a serious context. Uh, a margin says a friend and I were walking and she pointed at two crows sitting on a power line and said, call your cop friend. That's attempted murder. I had to sit down. I was giggling for so long. Great show. Your friend's awesome. Love that. People who are ready to pun at a moment's notice, I love them. Kim, really Wilson. Awesome today. I'm sorry. Kim Wilson says, oh, no, I missed the whole stream. Ripperoni. Hope it went well. Here's some money. Definitely go back and watch at least the first minute. <laughs> I, I liked the first minute of today's show. Uh, right after the thing's on. Lewis Bond as says. Well, as wrong as you were, it was fun. Oh, we'll do it another night. Oh, we don't, uh, why, we simply don't have the time. Go ahead. Why do bees have sticky hair? Why? Because they use a honeycomb. Uh, oh. Lewis uh, Bond, Bond says, I'm too tired for puns, maybe. No, that one's good. I'll keep it. Uh, in fact, I think I told you about, maybe I didn't, my, my TikTok idea that is bee themed. Did I tell you about it? I'll tell you about it another time. No. Anyway. Forrest and yeah. Jimmy going on about the technicalities of word use was worth every penny. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what triggered the 30-minute rant from the two of us. Just something did. Dante Verona, Jimmy and Forrest, do you distinguish between liberal, progressive, or a leftist? I, justify, I just identify as a pragmatic liberal because the Republicans must be defeated at every election. I am one of the nicer <laughs> leftists who acknowledge that liberals are on the right, and yet I still treat them as allies. Because I yeah. see a less radical uh, touch being more effective because it was more effective to change me from liberal to leftist. I, uh, I definitely treat it the same way that I treat the whole atheist versus agnostic. These words do have meaning, but in common parlance, it's whatever. Um, yeah. And so... If someone's going to call themselves a liberal, fine. If someone calls me a liberal, I'll be like, listen, here, you little yeah, shit. I'm not. You know, you. Liberals are, yeah, fuck that. Because <laughs> liberal is way, way right leaning for me. So, like, as for like what I distinguish between, yeah, if I'm speaking about these things, like talking about theory and talking about like what I actually believe versus what these people actually believe, probably if someone just throws a word around, I'm not going to like stop them and be like, what you actually mean is, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Because I am way farther left than any liberal or even most leftists. I'm yeah. way, way over there. I make Bernie look like Biden. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Very much so. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Bernie Sanders is way farther to the right than I am. Uh, definitely. So, like, if that, if that yeah. tells you anything about how I identify or what I call myself or what all, any of those things, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, it, I'm so fucking far left that I use the words anarcho-socialist rather than just communist. I just in the historical connotations of these things. That that's how fucking like yeah. I'm so far left. I'm spinning in fucking circles. Anyway, <laughs> Johnny Rapine says thanks for us. Minor brain bleed. I tried to sleep off. Didn't get to hospital for three days. Paramedic said it was badass, and I tried to sleep it off. I've been told it's badass. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I, I I have I have super glued multiple things closed that um, needed stitches. And uh, usually, like, I've had doctors be like, that's some metal shit, man. That's fucking metal as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but for real, though, expect, if you have a brain bleed, go, like, I'm not criticizing you, but, like, good God, don't take that shit. Don't take that lightly. So many people, especially if you are, like, up in age a little bit, if you're, like, you know, 50, 60 years old, if you get, like, a bonk on the head, yeah. don't, like, go check to make sure you're okay, because it is so fucking easy to rip one of those fucking bridging veins and have a fucking subdural hematoma and then you just fucking just drop. You don't even notice you had it, and then you just fucking just die. And they're like, oh yeah, his brain's been bleeding for a minute, because he fucking fell over three days ago in the driveway. Just take that shit <laughs> so seriously. So seriously. And there you have ladies and gentlemen in Smith's Mars advice from somebody who's clearly trying to live. What? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do what he said. He's right. I'm not gonna Johnny Rapine says, there's your Bob Richard shot quartet name, ambiguous genitalia. Speaking of torsion, hematospermia is thankfully not painful. Yes. It's blood ejaculation. It's metal, but it's not painful unless it's like the cause of it. But like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I got one of these. Uh, wait, it was something else. I got a little like thing on my balls, but it eventually went away. Uh, and it, it did hurt a little sometimes, but I think it was because of what it Tell was. Tell me like, more about your on. painful ball thing in Man, one I of the 2,000 people listening. It's hard for, oh, I don't care. I, it's hard for me to remember. <laughs> Dude, I've I've talked. I So, wait, yeah, no, not only will, would I do it. That oh man, I had this other channel. It's called R slash News. The video might still be up. Maybe it's unlisted because we changed a bunch of stuff on it. But when it was happening, I was telling people like, hey, I'm going to the doctor to get my balls ultrasounded. And if you're having these symptoms, you should too. And then I like talked about what I like told the whole story, man. I'm fucking, we got to talk about our balls more. Just don't make your balls other people's problem. That's the thing. That's the balance. Let's have healthy conversations about our balls. Anyway, this is the last one. Nuzzy D says, y'all kick ass, never stop. What are some resources... <laughs> To explore evolutionary psychology, origin of ethics, stay awesome for us and Jimmy. Uh, look up. Uh, yeah, I, I know I've shouted him out a lot. Um, here's a good one. Here. Oh, fuck. I just dropped it on the floor. God damn it. Ah, read this book. Behave by Robert Sapolsky, The Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst. Um, Robert Sapolsky is a, a, a neuroendocrinologist and neurobiologist at Stanford University. Um, and this is one of his many books on how behavior happens and, and like the evolutionary implications of these things. Um, and his usual thesis in like all of his talks are, um, or is just like, if I do a thing, it's not enough to just ask, you know, why it's what exact neuron fired to do that thing. What was my blood sugar in the past hour that would have allowed that to mental state to be there what was like my week like that got me to this point? What was my childhood like? What is my career like? What were my parents' childhoods like? What was the culture that we came from? What was the, you know, for, go back a million years. What was going on in the plains of Africa that led to a point today where I, and like all of this is very much connected. So he's pretty tight. I don't think he actually does evolutionary psychology. Um, but like, if you want to look into that, I'm sure there's better people about that. But I am not a psychologist, so like, this is is bio, and this is my jam right up in here. So read that guy, um, and also <laughs> read Evolution in Four Dimensions by Jablonk and Lamb, uh, which talks about behavioral evolution, and that might give you some indications. And also, <laughs> uh, read nine. the extended 
the extended phenotype by Richard Dawkins, and that'll give you some cool, cool thoughts as well. And it's similar to behavioral evolution. Johnny Rapine added, I wasn't thinking clearly because I was bleeding on my brain. I was amb ambulatory. I should have, oh, last for a second, I should have just walked to the hospital. It was less than a mile. Yes, one won't hold it against you no, that yeah, you weren't that's, thinking well. I wanted well. to say, I... I I didn't. I wasn't trying to like call you out. Like you had a brain bleed and made a yeah. bad decision, idiot. But yeah. like, yeah, no, definitely. Anybody, like, just please, everybody, take your brain very seriously, very yeah. seriously, because like that shit is is. If I had known when I was a teenager just how easy it is to fucking destroy your brain, I wouldn't have done half the dumb shit that I did. It is unbelievably yeah. simple. Rebecca Borg says, I was going to tell a time traveling joke, but you guys didn't like it. <laughs> Love the show and Jimmy's voice in the ether. Well, thank you. I feel like whenever I listen back, I go, God, my voice is way more nasally than I realize. Uh, don't forget to catch me tomorrow on Hostility with Owen Morgan, a.k.a. Telltale. He, uh, that'll be at 4 p.m. Central. We're going to go early tomorrow. Uh, and then Heathen Queen will be on The Hang Up with Matt, and then there will be a special Saturday episode of... Uh, Transatlantic Con show, and then on Thursday or Friday we might see a, a special little new show. Do you want to say your little wrap up? I'm totally going to play the intro of the new show instead of the outro of of uh, this show uh, when you're done. You yeah. What what did uh, what did Tennessee? The what? same thing that Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> I like that one. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Never stop learning.